Let's go ahead and start. It is 6.30 on April 21st. We are at the peak of coronavirus, COVID-19, but uh, the WordPress Toronto meetups just keep on happening. This is Let's Fix Your WordPress website, our April edition, our second virtual meetup. And I'm very happy to see all the folks that are joining now from all over the greater Toronto area and beyond. Uh, a little bit about our meetup. We've been hosting this meetup for several years physically at the North York Civic Center. And then for the last uh, more than a few months, probably for the last year or so, we've been hosting at the Local Space, which is a space, um, a workspace on uh, run by Kevin McIntosh and Heather Doubledam. Uh, there are three... Um, the three stories we we occupy the second story when we have our uh, meeting on St. Clair and Dufferin. But uh, for the last couple of months, for obvious reasons, we started doing this virtually, and it's working out really, really well. So the way this meetup works is um, we don't usually have introductions for everyone because it'll take a long time for everyone to do introductions. But what we do is we kind of work through our meetup um, uh, questions, and I I'm going to take a roll call now. See, there are 69 people um, um, uh, that have uh, that have RSVP'd for this event, which is great. We have about 100 people maximum on our uh, on our um, on our Zoom meeting, and so I'm going to uh, see if I can um, do an event check in here. So I'm going to call call out your name, and if you just uh, say pres, if you um, I'm going to actually share my screen, and we'll. Uh, you can see who I'm RSVPing here. Uh, so uh, I will RSVP myself. Uh, Al, are you here? Um, if you want to just uh, say yes or or some put something in the chat, and I will uh, and I will put it. Um, Alex Lamb. So a good way to check your microphone too. Uh, Andrea Schonert. Uh, See, I, as you can see, I, um, there's still people joining. Uh, Anik, uh, Anya Nicola. I see a lot of people joining here now. Uh, Arzu Prima. Asha Gia. Uh, Hi. Boris. Carl Mowad, Carmine Lombardi, Carol Binder, oh, that's a familiar name, um, uh, Cherry, uh, Christine, Christopher, Cindy, uh, Dale Campbell, Dan, are you there, Dan? Yeah, Dan is here. Oh, I got somebody. Okay, Denise. <clears throat> uh, Denise Sink Mars. Dina D. Page. Present. Hello. Hi. Fern. You there, Fern? I see you on the list. I'll, I'll RSVP you. Uh, Gary B. Sorry, I have to un unmute that. Sorry. That's okay. Gary B. I see a Gary B. Yeah, hi. There you are. You're there, Gary. Okay. Ha ah. <laughs> Hartley Pickens. <laughs> uh, JJ. JG Semexon Jr. Uh, Jacinta. Uh, Jock is here. Yelena Kovalnikov. Um, Jim. I'm here. There you are. Joe Bodego. Uh, John Kingston. I'm here. Hey, John. Uh, hi. Kathy Sturman. Yep, that's me. Hey, Kathy. Christina. Sometimes I can't tell who the people are. Maria. Mario M. 
Martin Silva. Yes. Hey, Martin. Miguel Hortiguela. I know Martin <coughs> Miguel is here. He chatted me. Uh, Miguel Rincon. Miroslav Glavcic. Mitch Mitchell Callahan. Nadia Adamji. Uh, Natalia. Nicolette Safans Safantakis. Omar. Ozzy Siliberti. I see Ozzy's in the list, so I'm going to check him off. Renata Prashevsky. Renata, you there? No. Richard Rossini. Robin. Let me see. Oh, I see Robin is actually on the list, so I'll check him in. Yeah, Rocco, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, Rocco Colangelo. Um, Salman Hyder. Sandy Feldman. Uh, Shannon Potter. Shang Long. TJ Ugochi. I'm not going to be able to pronounce that last name. Uh, Ugochi. Huh? Utam Kumar. Vamsi. Verdi RD. Uh, Wayne Murphy. I see you on the list. Devi Akineni. Jackie Lagos. Joseph Karshum. Yep. You there, Joseph? Yep. Cool. Mitchell, Michael Kerr. And Pierre Genest. Hey, Alex. Hello, Pierre. Okay. Uh, a few people that uh, didn't say hi, but um, I can see a few I people. I just that... joined. Hello. Who's that? Ozzy. Oh hey Ozzy, that's cool. I think I I think I RSVP'd you. I saw you in the list. Um, cool. All right. Well, so I'm just trying to do a little check in here. We have actually 22 people here, and I have 16 people checked in from this list. Uh, if you if you if you want to um, RSVP to the meetup group, feel free so we can get a get a good count. So what so again? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the list and we'll see if. Um, through all the the um, discussion here, uh, let's see here. Where is my? Where are my comments here? That's a good question. Let me go back to. Uh, there's a. Here we go. Okay. Um, so we're gonna start. Kind of at the beginning here, Mark Segal. Um, uh, welcome, Ruth. Um, so, Mark Segal, uh, are you here, Mark? Does not really have a question here. Um, so, um, Nicolette, are you here? Nope. So there was a bit of a question and answer there. Boris, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, cool. Yeah. Great. Okay, Boris. So my question here you have is my hosting has daily backups and easy quick restore. So I usually skip that step. Plus yeah. I have the latest PHP versions as default. Uh, so what, what's your question here actually? Well, I was just helping out Nicole, uh, Nicolette. I guess it didn't come underneath. Oh, okay. It didn't. It was yeah, not. sorry. It was, an, it was a re response. Okay. Uh, okay. You're giving her some help. Oh, okay. It's not really a question. All right. Um, Nicolette's not on the call, so I don't really know if that helped her out. Um, yeah. So this is updating PHP. So basically, there is, if you have a PHP version, you should go to your control panel and uh, set the version. And then, you, of course, you should check to make sure everything's operating after you do that. Uh, not a bad idea uh, beforehand to do a check to see that the um, theme plugins and such that you're working with are compatible mm -hmm. and there is a plugin 
that does exactly that. Um, you get a report at the end of it and it will tell you if any of those things are not gonna be compatible with the version of PHP you decided to go to. Because mm -hmm. um, otherwise, changing the, PH, changing the, meeting. the PHP version is just a switch setting that, that's uh, trivial to change at the server level. Yeah. You remember what the plugin is called? Uh, it's got the word compatibility in it. Um, okay. Uh, well, PHP. So PHP compatibility should should give you a hit. Okay. I see Renata joined. Welcome, Renata. I see you joined in by the uh, by a phone call. That's cool. Um, okay. Well, yeah. So PHP changes as a host level thing, but you got to be careful because compatibility is definitely a potential issue. Hey, Jim, do you have a question? Raise your hand. Yeah, I just had a comment. I had problems with that with a couple of websites. And at the time, they were on Web Faction. And they actually ended up having me put something in to the, what's it called? It's one of the core files. I don't know what it's called right now. And, but I had to put extra code in that said, I want to be on version 7.2. Um, that worked for one of the sites, but for the other site, because of the theme that my developer had created, mm -hmm. I had to go back to 5.6. And if it ever becomes incompatible with 5.6, that site of mine is down. Uh, well, and then eventually the versions of PHP will be unsupported unless your host keeps running them. I think that a lot of them will keep running older versions of PHP, but some will actually grandfather out certain versions. Eventually. I think, Alex, the current um, <clears throat> version of WordPress has gone up like a point something or other from 5.3 or 4 to 5.6, um, which represents another 10 or 15% of the 40% who are still on WordPress world. Yeah, for sure. I can actually show you an interesting, in, if, you, if you're writing WordPress version, I think 5.2 or 5.1, I don't remember exactly, they introduced the site health feature really it's a really nice feature it's under um yeah actually that i'm sorry to not to steal your thunder but yeah were you going to mention that it will flag your php version if yeah it's <clears throat> yeah so if you go under if you have version i don't remember when exactly this was introduced but this is not available on definitely 5.0 or later but i think it was 5.0 or 5.1 one of the actually, i think versions. well it first came out in a plug-in right yeah it was the health plug-in and uh, for a couple of years at least. So I think it went in a year or two ago yeah. as core. So when you, when you go to tool site health, this is actually not, you don't have, if you have a, a latest version, it should always be available. This will run your status and it gives, and it gives you some suggestions. So for example, we have a plugin that needs to be updated. Um, in this case, uh, it doesn't tell you which one, but it says there's one plugin to be updated. And so you can go, and it tells you where to go. So like you should go and manage your plugins and there'll be a plugin update. We actually update plugins on the site every week. So probably something got updated very recently. Um, and then uh, removing, and here's some recommendations, removing in, inactive themes. Uh, here's a running an older version of, we should be updated. So we're running 7.133 on the site and they're, they're, they suggest 7.3. So that's a much, I mean, not much, not much later, but it's later. Uh, here is a, a few, oh, thank you. Here's a few modules that are missing from um, the, 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 the site. These are recommended, they're not required, but uh, so, so sometimes the performance of a site can run better. These are for like managing, um, but some hosts don't have this installed and so you may have to do without. Um, there's, a, there's some technical things around SSL this is a 301 HD access redirect. So you can, you can, you actually can click this and, and turn on really simple SSL uh, through a option. And um, that will help you redirect to the secure site if somebody um, does. And then these, and this shows you the tests that there's tests that were passed. And so it kind of shows you all the various other tests that are running, which potentially could cause issues. Uh, and so these, and these, so these are site health. And then if you go on info, it collects a bunch of information about your server setup. So if you ever have, um, if you if you ever have somebody ask you, well, what version of PHP are you running? Or what version of the database are you running? Or what version of 
WordPress are you running or what, what are your active plugins or what are your inactive themes or what, all, you know, all kinds of stuff here. And so what happens is then it kind of creates this, this view and you can open up all the things about WordPress and various different options here. And then directories and all the size of your directories, for example, where how big your uploads are, it calculates that. And what, what's your active theme that you're running? And what are your inactive themes? And, you know, this is a bunch of stuff. Here's your database versions and the database username and the, and the um, doesn't give you the password, which is good, but it gives you at least that information. And then you can copy this to your clipboard, copy the site info, and then that gives you this really nice, complete version, complete kind of dump of all this information in here, which is a really good debugging information that's usually you have to go to lots of different places, including like maximum memory limits and all sorts of server level type of stuff. Um, jetpacks, jetpack options, so all kinds of uh, options that potentially could be used in debugging. So the site health is really handy. Okay. I, think I, saw I shared in there. the comment, uh, you can see the wordpress.org requirements right now. Uh -huh. And they're stating PHP version 7.3 or greater. Yeah. And that's their way to really push forward uh, the PHP, PHP versions because the previous ones are less secure and have lower performance. So it's really okay. good practice to get the latest version um, and to ask for it and actually demand it from your hosting provider. For sure. Yeah. And if your plugin doesn't support that version, so you better find a different plugin because it's probably not as secure as it can be. Yeah. And the performance could be also lacking and it'll, and it'll potentially be a, um, you know, a, a uh, vulnerability in your site, right? Because like if you have stuff that's really old, it's not supported by newer versions of PHP, it might be vulnerable as well. So it's all of this stuff is all about site health. And it's something you very much should worry about because it's very easy for something bad to happen. Your site goes down because you don't have, um, you know, you're not maintaining a base. It's all about maintenance, right? So yeah, that's really good. Um, so basically PHP 7.3, MySQL 5.6, or MariaDB, and HTTPS, which is SSL support. So they really want, I mean, this is unusual that somebody wouldn't support SSL, but you should run your site on SSL, not on unsecure. Okay, so that's good. Um, Martin, uh, actually I saw a hand go up. Oh, let me just see yes. here. Hand but, went uh, up. Oh. I managed to fix that problem because I got the uh, the desktop server premium and they have uh, distance uh, assistance with that. Oh, okay. In the meantime, I have uh, another site. I'm just an amateur, just starting out sites, you know, just to learn how to make them. And uh, it's with Namecheap. Uh, so uh, the problem is I cannot get... Oh, you cannot start screen share while the other participants. So if you put your screen down, maybe I can show you mine. Sure. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's my screen in the C panel for the uh, WW name cheap, but I want to go, I cannot get a website builder, which is the, uh, the, you, the Martin, the, you have, I don't see your screen. Does anybody see Martin's screen? No, I don't tell you. Okay. Make sure you share. Share. Zoom. Share screen. Share. Now? Yeah. Right. Go C panel. C panel, correct. So in this C panel, if I go here to the website built, which is the little tool that they give for the uh for us to build, you know, the basic website, I have it. I built it there. But now I wanted to use desktop server, you know, so that I could do modifications on my desktop and then upload it. But it looks like the C panel here doesn't allow me to go to the web, uh, to the WordPress uh, desktop uh, site, uh, to the, uh, the dashboard. So I wonder if this is just like a, a Namecheap. Namecheap is the hosting uh, place. So I wonder if this is just a little thing that they only allow you to see and build your website on this website builder, this app of theirs, which is this, or if I could then go to the, w, the, the WordPress dash, dashboard to be able to 
make modifications on WordPress. Has anybody worked with uh, this name Cheap's hosting site? Would I be able to scroll that page? So, sorry? Well, what does web, this website builder, like whose is it? What is it working with? Is it creating a, a WordPress website? You see, I don't know. That's the thing. Because yeah, uh, just the name alone won't tell us. Does anybody know? Yeah. When I put it there. Uh, wait a sec, wait a sec. Guys, does anybody know what this thing actually does? Because there's no point in discussing this much if we have no idea who's script. You know, like something. If oh, that's not a web. That's not a WordPress website. That's a that's a, a different website builder. Oh, okay. yeah, right. Because most cPanel, uh, most hosts have cPanels equipped with. 40 or 50 different scripts that you can install, a CMS, um, um, any, you know, Drupal, Joomla, WordPress, whatever, and then they have builders, but they don't tell you what the builder works with, but it's, it's none of those brand name uh, platforms. Um, so if this is, you know, just some generic site builder, God knows what's behind it, why not, I mean, to me, start from scratch with WordPress with any content, you know, re-entered and forget this one altogether. Okay. That's just, I mean, guys, anybody have a different thought? What is the URL of your website? Sorry? Uh, it's uh, www.villamorningstar, like that in one word, dot online. Uh, that might be the name of the theme in question. Website Builder is in the top left corner there, is what it's called in cPanel. Uh, you go back to cPanel and scroll down to the bottom, there should be a collection of different things that you can, scripts that you can run with a kind of a script manager. There it is, Soft Delicious or Soft Taculous. Yeah, that's the one. On the top bar there, you see WordPress on the left. Yeah. But these are not the Site Builder, quote unquote, generic things in question. You could install WordPress just clicking that button there and, and fill out the form. The thing you built, we have no idea what it is. And it looks like more trouble figuring it out than it can possibly be worth. So just start anew. Start, start new with WordPress. Okay. There you got the button. Push that button instead, and then you're off the races. So yeah. Martin, your website is not on WordPress. It's a different system. OK. It's a, oh. And also, it has a security issue, so worth yeah. it. Yeah, and it's a, like a no-brand content management system, which is not generally something that comes recommended. Thank you. All right. I have a question. Um, Gary, we're going to just go in order first when people okay. are posted on Meetup. Okay. So we're going to go to uh, Carl next. Carl, are you there? Hi there. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Carl. Welcome. Thank you for posting on our meetup group. Um, hey, Alex. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got a nice uh, 26 people on the call now. Hey, this is great. Uh, Carl says, hi there. Hoping to attend my first WordPress meetup this week. Well, welcome. You, you've you joined a virtual one. Um, scope of the group. Um, yeah, I, re I remember reading this. Um, coding is out of scope of this group. It's very difficult to help people with code because it'll take up the majority of a uh, the time unless it's some very obvious question. So we do not answer jQuery or PHP questions. Unfortunately, it's not a developer oriented group and a lot of people will go uh, outside their game. WooCommerce Q and A is probably, you can probably ask it. I mean, it depends on the who's, who's here that knows WooCommerce, which is a plugin for WordPress for e-commerce. That's probably possible because it's a configuration thing. A lot of plugins that people have, especially popular ones people use. Um, uh, so, sorry, Alex, just to interrupt for a second, but we, you've lost, we've got a tiny little picture of you, like a one inch by one inch image. Oh, yeah, I, I turned off my video temporarily. Also, oh, okay. I'm, I'm actually eating dinner in, in the background while you guys are discussing. <laughs> because all right. I had a chance to have lunch or dinner today. So, um, so yeah, so jQuery PHP is not, WooCommerce is. So a question about using a jQuery accordion widget uh yeah that will probably be to be too complex because it's probably a developer oriented thing um about woocommerce how to able a uh, leverage an object's value returned by a plugin as a quantity value to add it to the cart uh so again i'm not sure if this is a coding related questions but yeah they 
they are nuanced, but you want to show us your screen and let us know what you mean by WooCommerce and we'll see, if, you know, if it's a coding thing or maybe. Yeah, absolutely. And I do think it is a little bit more um, of a coding issue than it is a WooCommerce um, issue. And, and, and so uh, this is just a kind of a starting point of, of where I'm, I'm going and, and just to give you an idea of what this is. So uh, WooCommerce, and you know, I appreciate the, uh, the very brief introduction. I think most people on this call should be familiar with it. So WooCommerce is an e-commerce uh, plugin that, um, that is hosted on WordPress and uh, it enables you to sell items via your WordPress website. So uh, what, I've, uh, what I'm trying to develop here is a build your own type platform where customers can come on uh, and leveraging this plugin, which is a plugin for WooCommerce running on WordPress, um, it allows you to create um, kitted products. So these are not, each of these is actually uploaded as an individual product, and then they're available here as a kitted product once I create a, a, an item, which I've done here. So you could see the chocolate crunch is added. Uh, Beta, Alanine, and Taurine are, are showing up here as well. And so uh, I think my question might be out of the scope of this group because um, what I'm looking to do is I want to adjust, you know, take this over here, which is a, it's another plugin, which is returning a jQuery, uh, a JavaScript value. And I want to have that be used as the quantity here um, when I'm adding it to my card. But I think for the scope of this group, um, this might take Alex to your point a bit too much time to kind of look into and, and try to problem solve. Um, so I, I would rather leave it out unless you feel otherwise. Well, the only thing I would say is, does anybody have any experience with the kind of functionality that would be built in and doesn't require jQuery? Something that WooCommerce uh, can allow to do just by plugging and playing? Um, what I, the way I usually tackle uh, WooCommerce is try to do a Google search, you know, using WooCommerce for the functionality you're after and see what it returns. It should return a bunch of plugins that are close to what you have or exactly. Um, a lot of them, like if you look at the most popular one from WooCommerce.com itself, they sell a bunch of plugins too that might be able to help you on there. So you're doing a basically like a kidding thing, right? So That's I've right. got individual products and then I'm going to make a product from those, like a like actually a computer, right? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. that's it. So this here is like a vitamin mix, for instance, that you can create. And once you add it to your cart, it'll show up as a kitted item. Yeah. Um, in there. Okay. Um, um, have you looked at uh, the Facebook WooCommerce groups there? Because there's some really good social groups for WooCommerce, especially if you're looking for a specific customization and you can't find it within a pub, pub plugin. The response times are pretty good. Um, I know the moderator there. I can uh, post some of the links in um, the chat here if you think that's going to be beneficial to you. Yeah, I'd appreciate that, Heather. I think any kind of resource that I could utilize here um, would, would certainly be very helpful. Okay, I'll, I'll put them in the chat for you. Thanks so much. Wonderful, wonderful, that's great. Yeah, I think that in general, trying to use functionality that's already been built that kind of integrates directly is better than trying to like reinvent the wheel to some extent. You gotta, you gotta spend the time finding this thing that actually will work for you. And that's hard sometimes to articulate exactly what it is. You have to kind of experiment with stuff. Um, yeah, so there's a link here that Sandeep shared uh, with everyone. And I'll put this actually in the notes on your on the meetup group. So anything anything that you guys want uh, to, to, to give to uh, Carl, feel free to um, um, I just shared it on the meetup group. Um, yeah, I'll stop your sharing and I'll share. So if you go if you if you want if you have something that you want to share, you want it to be shared for posterity. Um, put it on the meetup in response to Carl's question, and then you can um, facilitate the answers there. So this is a question on Stack Overflow that talks about programmatically updated card item quantity. So that might be, I haven't looked at it, but uh, here's Heather, uh, uh, great Heather. So these are a couple of, I'll put these in here. Awesome, thanks so much Sandeep and Heather. Yeah, these, are, these, these, these Facebook groups for WooCommerce and WordPress are amazing. They yeah, have like, yeah, it's I really like, like it's like, it's like, imagine this kind of a meetup at times like, you know, a thousand, <laughs> they have like 20 to 30,000 people all over the world. And there's probably some, of, and, and they're very helpful and people have, you know, it's, it's likely that you're doing something that's been done before. And so instead of having to invent it, people will point you to something and 
say, hey, try this or do this? <clears throat> I would highly recommend though first that um, when you join the group, use the search in that group for what you're looking for first before you post it because you know there's thousands of requests that may match what you're looking for that you can search in that group mm -hmm. for sure for sure for sure absolutely that's a good that's always a good thing of a stack overflow and, and, and searching is really something that is an understated art and uh or under underappreciated and uh um so yeah it could be really you could be much better okay i think i think we're getting to the near the near the end of these lists here. So Fern, I see you have re adding a landing page to subdomain. Uh, what was that question about Fern? Okay, sure. Um, um, I'm, I'm just about to get a landing page, but I'm, there's so many big companies that do it that I, I haven't decided yet. Um, and I just want to be, uh, be, I just want to ask a general question about this. Um, and then I can, I can, there's another thing you can help me fix on the site, something, but I have a general question about landing pages. Um, I don't know how many people know about this. It's like, it's like doing a, a, a paid ad, a paid ad campaign on Facebook that, that your ad takes you to a landing page and you're selling, you have an offer, a, a lead magnet, an offer, and that's how you get lead generation leading up to a sale in the end. So um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking into all this. So regarding land, landing pages, does anyone know about these companies, Thrives Architect, Thrives Architect, and the other one is Optimizer Press. These are two very big companies that have high-end designs for a landing page templates. Does anyone know about these two and the difference between the two? Because they're similar. Um, and I mean, tech support is just by email. There's no, no you know, there's no chatting or uh, no phone calls or chatting or anything. It's just email support, but they're very, very good. They give you. Anyway, does anyone know about these two companies? It's interesting. I've, uh, I'm doing uh, two days from now a look at team builders and page builders, and I haven't run into uh, either of the two. Uh, and one of the specific topics we're going to look at is creating landing pages. Well, so, uh, I'll uh, be interested in uh, uh, if you just send me the uh, names again through chat. Uh, I'll look into those and and bring it up in the uh, uh, yeah. as appropriate in the uh, presentation on uh, Thursday. Um, Ern, what was the name of the second one? You mentioned okay. Thrive Architect was the first. Okay, well, first the second one's name. Well, the Okay, uh, Thrives are uh, the uh, Optimizer Press. Optimizer Op Press. Optimizer Press. Yeah, and I these are really really big legitimate companies because I went to YouTube stuff on landing pages. And I, I got from one thing to the other. I found out about these, and I their websites. You can see everything they do. So, no, I mean I've, I've heard of Thrive Architect, and it's one of a suite of products from the same company. Uh, the the different versions have some slightly different you know, capabilities, maybe the architect is the biggest one that encompasses all the rest, or maybe it's one of the so, sub suites, but okay, it's, so, um, it is um, landing I mean, page oriented. That's for sure. Yep. The other big one is called lead pages, lead pages, and tons of people use those. Um, it's not as the, the designs are not as, you know, high end, but they, they're the most, they're cost effective. However, but, can I, can, I ask, with, can I ask a question? Sorry to interrupt you, Fern, but are these yeah. related to WordPress in any way, or is this just a general? They're, yeah, they're all. I mean, the, the first two I gave you, th that's what I was going to ask you. Are they um, WordPress they're plugins? They're telling me yes. that. Well, well Thrive Architect me, is, a, is a premium plugin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's page builders. I see. Right. It's a page builder, but it's a, it's a bit specialized, at least in some part of that product line. There's a very much landing page sort of oriented design capability. That, that it initially became known for. And I well, think perhaps then it expanded to sort of a larger scope uh, yeah. with the architect thing. They're, they're both very, very WordPress. I mean, the first thing you do is you create a new Anyway, page. Word, it's WordPress all the way. Okay, yeah. sure. so what I want to ask you is the concept of, um, uh, you see with these, you know, these, these, are, these are expensive uh, propositions, but I don't know if you, if, if my landing page is going to be very simple. It's just going to be free offer, click on to download the PDF or whatever. It's going to be very simple, but they, they say that you need a self-hosted WordPress site and domain name. 
self-hosted. I don't know what they mean by self-hosted. I mean, I have a WordPress. It means it's site. not WordPress.com. It means it's like you. It's the way oh. that you have your site. You have, you have an account. With, you have an account with a right. host. Your like your, what your site is. And and in yeah. my case, uh, uh, SiteGround gave me a subdomain, so I have a subdomain. Yeah. There. Right. But, so you can install WordPress yeah. there and a subdomain, and then install right. these plugins. So but can, what, what I'm the thing that I'm just curious about. Either you buy these templates you get you get a library of 300 templates which you can also use as sales pages it's quite it's a whole sales funnel thing it's like the big thing now what everyone's doing to make money and this is a good time of you know with with the um the environment we're in right now this is a really uh, uh, it's really you can it's like an online business from your home i mean the whole world's doing it now but anyway <laughs> I'm just investigating and I'm learning all about Facebook advertising and metrics. It's very common. You'll find that the, the, the better known page builders come with large collections of templates, both for themes as well as like individual components like calls to action and images yes. and such. So right. I think what you're talking about is a specialized page builder that's marketing, sales, blah, blah oriented. They, they, and they therefore do. the templates are heavily weighted in that direction. Yeah. And if that's what you're looking for, yeah. it sounds like, you know, you're on the right track. Yeah, lead generation, you know, getting emails and building them up. And because Is I that have part of marketing and sales? I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, I, marketing's pretty broad. So I think, you know, yeah. I think what you're looking for might fall within that broad range. But where, where I'm confused is either you, you, you do it yourself, you just, you just basically build a new page and you just caught, you, just do what they do with you. You have, you have to have the, uh, the, the buttons for um, opt-in, opt-in stuff. And it's probably something so simple that you could build on your own. Well, well Fern, but like you have to, ask, before you get into the technology, into the solution, ask yourself what the problem is. So like, what is it, what is a, what's a landing page in your opinion? It's just, it's, it's just, it's, it, it has the look of a website, but it's not. It's like one or two pages. All right, let's let's take a little poll here. Uh, let's let's have three answers of what people think a landing page is. Feel free to just jump in. What's a landing page? <laughs> single page application for sales. A single page application for sales. Good. Anybody it's else? It's an opt-in to get. Right. No, from we're not taking your oh, definition because yeah. you actually don't exactly know what it is. I can tell. Usually landing pages serve a purpose. You know, whether you're going to be collecting uh, click-throughs, if you're going to be monitoring for um, click rates and sales, lead generations, things like that. So it only serves a particular purpose. Right. It's built. Right. And, and so what oftentimes people doing landing pages try to do is get their whole pitch, so to speak, on the one page. And so in a certain sense, you can think of it like a single page site that has a job to do that's driven by some campaign that sends traffic to that page where you try to inform and convert and close all in one page. So Ross says a good definition, a simple web page used for a very specific single purpose yeah. or action from the visitor. That's good because that is not sales necessarily oriented. It's not even lead generation oriented. It's just a simple web page, simple being an important word, meaning it's not, you don't have a bunch of menus and a bunch of options and tabs and all kinds of stuff uh, used for a very specific single purpose, meaning that you want to communicate something, you want somebody to do something or action. So like a purpose, meaning communication of something or an action like filling out a form, downloading a PDF <clears throat> from the visitor. So that definition I like, and that definition means you can build a landing page with out of the box WordPress. Right. Like it's like, it's just the concept, the application of solutions are, are blown out to infinity. There's, there's all sorts of startup companies built just for the purpose of doing a landing page. But I'll, 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 I'll tell you something, a little secret about landing pages. They're not worth anything unless you actually have something to sell or offer or do anything like that. So no matter what the landing page is, if it doesn't actually incite action or communication of some sort, you can pretty up in all kinds of different ways. But if there's not a, va a value proposition exchange there, that's pretty clear and it's not easy to use, um, you're not gonna get anything out of it. And so my point being is that uh, you can build a landing page with uh, a simple template in WordPress that doesn't have any menus 
have a simple headings like using Gutenberg blocks and a form, for example, with a nice button at the bottom that says, download this PDF. That's a landing page, right? So there are a lot of tools out there, but they're just spiffier ways of designing them with more complexity. But in the end, they're not going to sell the product for you, right? Or you can just use a pop-up that creates the same effect. Totally. You can use a pop-up, man. You can put, there's all kinds of ways to communicate. Right. And, and I, think, a, and, I think that there's two aspects that are worth noting that, yeah. yes, it, a landing page can be completely divorced from its marketing and sales sort of origin, but primary sort of use of landing pages because that's what pays the most. Probably landing pages are got to be as on a page for page basis, the best paid pages around because when they work, they really deliver you know, value to whoever owns them. Of course, as Alex says, if your product sucks, it doesn't matter how good the landing page is, you can only sell, as they say, shit in a bag once. Let me show you a landing page here that we just received from one of our partners, Wild Africa. This is a landing page. Let me show you kind of what's happening here. Notice there's no navigation, right? Because they don't want you to go away from this. They want you to do something. They want you to. I'll give you one guess what they want you to do on this page. One guess. Fern? Sign up. Now. <laughs> right. Right. But Not why do you think up. this is a landing page rather than just a form? Yeah, it's sign up now. And so what is this? Page has a logo. has a nice big template. Has a, It's usually town bound. So you like there's something happening. Oh, okay. So the, now you're going to give us the rest of the page. Okay. Yeah, with these people. And then there is so there's some information and there is a name and an email to register for this, which will generate an email. And then there's a little bit more information. There's a nice picture, who these people are. Um, and then it gives you some more background so you can get it, but above, and then, and then again, there's another right. reconfiguration. And then if you want right. to get in touch, there's an email. There's a landing right. page. This is a perfect okay, so example did, of a landing page. Did you guys want me to share my screen and I can show you what these very bold, Bold temp templates. No, like no, no, because okay. there's no, there's no really question there. What, okay. what, what, what we're saying is you can probably with that, with that template builder, build that, but you can also build it with WordPress too. Like you can build a page like this with WordPress. You don't need a, you don't need a, a fancy template builder, right? right? Because it's just using headings and using layout and pictures and a simple form to collect some information. That's all a landing pages. Lots of ways mm -hmm. of doing it, but yeah. again, you got to have something to sell and here they're selling. Well, I've all well, people, uh, you know, I'm in a group that's doing this with Facebook advertising and I'm seeing all their landing, but some people are just, they want to book a call. I mean, there's, they're, they're, they're give they're providing a free offer in order to get that to that call later by nur by nurturing emails. It's a whole process. Yeah, whole for sure. For sure. This is uh, a way that I, I've already prepared my PDF. It's, it's like a guide. It's the 10, the 10 best secrets to successful marketing. I've already prepared it. It's very, you know, bright, vivid co colors. It's yeah, but, very but the, one, the one thing a landing page won't do for you on its own is did generate the audience. That's the question. Like where, where, where are you going yeah. to feature this link? Oh, you, what you do, you do is you, you select your audience with Facebook, the kind of people you want to target. That's one way that's advertising, but there's other ways too. Right now. That, I'm that, just you have to pay go. for that, right? You have to actually pay. And so sure, the question it's like $10 a day and if that's a a small campaign, ten dollars a day for ten dollars a day will get you ten clicks. But if it's not working, you can oh, three or four people. people. <laughs> no, but they, but they're qualified or not? No, I'm with a group. Burn. Yeah, burn. Yeah. burn. Yeah. burn. Yeah. You gotta you gotta read up on them before you jump into all this. Mm -hmm. You gotta really understand what's happening here. There's well, a like, can I simplify this? Yes, please. When I used to be involved in marketing stuff and we do mass mailings, mm -hmm. we always asked at the end, "Where is the call to action piece?" You know, whether it's mail a card in to order something, whether it's to, that sort of stuff, but it's, it's a call to action item. Say, yeah. we want you to do something. I know. And this is what we want you to do. These, these templates are known to convert very well. And if you saw them, you won't if let you me have, show them. If you have enough people coming to them to begin with, you gotta no, have no. people coming to them though. Right, no, but you, you, you start, it's like, um, it's like lead generation. I mean, on Facebook, that you, you people start as you know opting in with their emails, and that's how you develop. And you, you do this until you get to a thousand emails. And once you do that, you can remarket them with different offers. It's how about how about ten thousand emails, Fern? <laughs> no, but I'm no. The, I'm telling you that the on Facebook. Okay. They Does don't let me ask a question here. Before, we're going to move on, but has anybody successfully used a landing page? 
slash Facebook campaign in this group right now and can talk about it actually with from right. experience. That's right. what I want to know. Anybody? So has anybody personally been invested in spending no. X amount of dollars with Facebook no. or Google and doing that? Can, is anybody willing to talk about it and how, it's, how successful it was? Well, all, all I wanted to ask Sorry. you was- um, No, but I, but, but I have, a, but, but hold on a second. Yeah, is okay. anybody willing to talk about it? We have 26 people on the call. Is anybody willing to talk about it? Well, I have a client that's spending a fortune um, trying to get leads for insurance quotes. So okay. I've done a site for him. He's got two sites going. Okay. And basically he spends a pay per click. Right? Quite a few, about a, quite a few thousand every month. And? And uh, basically they go to quote a landing page. The way I designed it is right to the point. I'm looking for say travel insurance. Right. There's a page travel insurance and two, two areas too, just like you saw where they just put a button in. It just wants simple information, uh, name and email address and they'll get back to them. And how but successful? they just spend a fortune, right? Uh, does it work? They're still in business after three, four years. So yeah. So they've been, but they spend a lot of money to actually get that traffic there. Yeah. What he doesn't tell me is, okay, I know they, they, those, uh, each click costs them a fortune, a bit of a fortune. I think it's almost a dollar now, oh. but how much is it in return? Does he get from the insurance companies? If they follow oh, yeah. through well, with their, If he keeps on insurance. doing it, it must be valuable. He was yeah. shocked if he wasn't, right? So there must um, be, there must Marcus, be. Is this client the sort of analytical mind that sort of, that would be able to, at least for his own purposes, have a cost per sale that he actually, you know, can, it's like X dollars. That's what it costs me for each person who signs a contract and gives me revenue. Because it's I'm trying to get out of it. All that. I get is I'm still in business. I'm not asking you if he tells you. I'm just saying th there's the data would be there to tell him that from the yeah. analytics if he was inclined to get it and use it and so on. So I'm just asking, do you think he does that? Yeah, I'm sure he does because. Oh, great. Good. So that's really one of the valuable things. Yeah. Pity one you, of, don't, one of the, you don't get it. If I, <laughs> if I can just jump in. One of the so-called uh, call to action piece uh, that we always have done for J&J, &J, every single piece of material, uh, had to ask the question, what's in it for me, looking at it from the standpoint of the target group? And if you can uh, answer that question, you've got a good uh, piece. Yeah. What's in it for me? You have to ask that question. Absolutely. Why should I fill out this form or answer that question? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, hey, so Alex. This oh, yeah. Is, uh, this is Pierre. Uh, perhaps I could chime in a little bit here. Um, on the, uh, I run a fairly successful affiliate affiliate page where uh, websites generate traffic and then they monetize it through um, our, our, our site. So what we do is we um, uh, have affiliates that generate leads uh, through Facebook and different mediums. They send it to our monetizing site, which is uh, a loan site that refers it to a lender. And what we do is we revenue share with that lender. So uh, there's a lot of uh, affiliates that uh, like you said, blow their brains out, spend a lot of money, doesn't generate a lot of traffic. Uh, there's others that um, do it much more efficiently. When you say cost per click, it depends on what you're bidding on. If you're bidding on a mortgage, you're going to be spending three and five and ten dollars per click. Whereas if you're searching for a more obscure one, you'll spend a lot less. Yep, definitely. But if you're searching for a jet, for instance, and then land on a page and make a deal as a result, and you know, I think that. That's a good example of something that can repay off. Yeah. Um, but whether that it, a landing page wouldn't be sufficient to do it. So obviously, yeah. this but, is but, part of a big but, campaign. But Fern, go ahead, go ahead and try, like, uh, try some of these and see what it comes up with and see if like it, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, there's, well, a lot, there's lots of different ways of doing it. It's an art. Well, thing. Okay, so, um, you know, it, it's like you can, for a hundred US dollars, you can get 300, templates and that can include like sales pages other things along the way in the sales funnel you might need yep. i mean for, for the, it's like a one-time fee i would not take those companies like lead pages and a lot of them have monthly fees and, and you you yeah. never you never keep your template you right, have to but keep it's, subscribing but it's, a tool. it's a tool that you would resell to a company and you have to get good at not just the design of it but actually at the analytical part of what you're trying to do because you know, the person will buy that product if you can actually make it perform, 
right? Like they're not going to buy if it doesn't perform. So that means it's a lot more than the lead, than the landing page. It has to be also the traffic, how it gets there. So the affiliate marketing is one, Facebook ads is another. There's all sorts of different mechanisms to do this and some of them work and some of them don't. Well, okay. well uh, I, I, I had a question. Oh, we're going we're gonna to move on. So Gary, do you had yeah, your hand up for a while. Did you have a question you wanted to ask? Yeah, I wanted to ask about a, uh, Oh, you just muted. <laughs> okay, they unmute myself. Okay. So yeah, so um, there's a problem with the latest uh, 5.4 WordPress I noticed where every URL appearing in the URL bar starts with index.php followed by the actual category or page name. And if you can disable that behavior in permalinks, apparently it breaks the saving of pages at some point. And a second workaround for that is to install the classic editor as a plugin. And that seems to help getting around. So either you install the classic editor or you leave the URL looking at index.php slash something, something. Anybody? I, I haven't, I don't, I've not seen this. I've watched. Did you go into your permalinks and save your permalinks twice and then yeah. clear your browser cache? Yeah, I did all of those things and I found a tech support website and they told me that restoring what was originally in the permalinks where the permalink, I'll just read it out to you one second. Hmm. A permalink. Well, another alternative would to, for you to take a look at your HT access file and verify that your rewrite rules haven't been oh, modified. Not all, that all fine. That. I set up three servers in the past few days and only one of them is behaving this way. Okay, good. And I was just wondering why that oh. is. Because index, index.php should not even ever be in any permalink format. Yeah. yeah. That's there what I thought, like, because I've set up so many sites and this uh -huh. is the first one that's doing this. Uh -huh. And yeah, so that, when good. I go into permalinks, uh, one second, let's put yeah, it. Permalinks, that's just kind of a behavior, server side behavior. It's actually working, but it still has put index.php in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and when, I, when I Google this problem, they apparently said it's a known problem. With what, WordPress? Yeah. I've never had that and I've updated and, seven sites. That's odd. Okay. Do you have any? Yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll plugins? Say slash index.php slash then the year, month, num, day, post name. And if uh -huh. I change that to say the, the www.transcendspectrum.com, which is my website, and then if I change it to slash sample post, which is the format I want yeah. instead, of the, instead of the crazy long string. But yeah. then that, when I try to save a page or post after going into the editor, uh -huh. Not the classic editor, the new editor. Then when I save it, it says it can't save the page. Uh -huh. Unless I restore the old permalink structure. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's just kind of weird. And I think it happened with 5.4. And the other thing was with PHP 7.3. I installed it. It didn't work. I deinstalled it. Installed 7.2, started working. <laughs> Same site. So it's there hard. was an underlying issue, I think. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, is it a vanilla site? You just installed it without anything else on it? Yeah, I just started brand new. I didn't even import or export anything. Did you, did you try installing another site on that same host and see if the problem is the same there? Yeah, I installed uh, uh, twice on Amazon Web Services on the EC2. No, no the, one, the one where it's working badly, mm. did you try to do another Word, fresh WordPress install to see if it's a problem? What I did was I copied the site from the previous machine I had set up, which was working properly. Uh -huh. I just copied the folder structure in a zip file over and with the permissions and everything correct. Okay. So the, the folder structure is identical. Right. Okay. Yeah. But the data. Does the site have any content in it or it's a brand new site? It's a brand new site. So I just put in pages manually. Since there's only three pages, I just copied and pasted from the, the content into the, into the, the forms and it was back. So I just wanted to see how it looks. And whether AWS and EC2 is a viable platform, so I set this up. So yeah, there isn't a pro there is not a problem with Amazon. But what I would say, if it's you know just a site with a few pages, mm -hmm. I would delete everything yeah. and install a new fresh site, not by copying right. a folder from another place, but right. you know starting off downloading the last version for WordPress.org. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're I, saying this problem is on Amazon Web Services. This is where yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have the two, I, I two servers running both FreeBSD. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, there, there's something wrong with your config. There's something with what you copied there in the database or something. No, I didn't even copy the database. I just copied the web server files and I created a new database. Right, but that's not a fresh install what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a WordPress file, so I was thinking. But, but why? Why don't you just do a fresh install? Why? Why are you fixated on? copying an existing install because to get it to work with the right permissions in the first instance of the first uh, machine I set up was uh, quite challenging. It, it bear, it took, it took a lot of permission fixing to get it to work. So I wanted to maintain all those, the owners, the owners and permissions of the files. I wanted to maintain them. And then you wanted to transfer that over to uh, Amazon. Yeah. I had two identical uh, servers, two identical web servers set up. So I just took the data directory from one and copied the data directory to the other. That's all. Yeah, but that's not I a just copy the instance itself. <laughs> hmm? Right. The, the idea was not to copy the instance because I was experimenting with different instances, different PHP versions, things like that. Okay. So I wanted well, to buy the same WordPress. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this is not a problem with WordPress. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is like a very particular kind of, I'm surprised it even works. Uh, but I guess maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's some sort of like a, but there's, there's definitely something in that particular config that's breaking WordPress. But, Whatever but, that may but be. just so you know, it, by the way, it works perfectly fine, except showing the index.php there. Oh, I under, well, no, it doesn't work perfectly fine because your Gutenberg breaks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, don't say that. Actually, why don't you post a link to the, if you post a link to this thing that explains that WordPress knows about this problem. Yeah. So we yeah. can look at it. Okay. We got a couple more questions. We're going to move on. We got a couple more questions here coming up. I know that. Let me just see if I can get this in order of what people asked. Uh, Pierre is going to ask about WooCommerce. Pierre? Yeah, sorry. I, I was on mute. And by the way, I find this uh, very, very useful. So thank you very much. Um, I am, I wear two hats. Uh, when I spoke earlier, I was talking about my sales hat with a, uh, an affiliate run that I, uh, an affiliate site that I run in sales and we've got a CTO doing that stuff. But I have another uh, site where I'm creating uh, three websites, all pulling from the same inventory. And I installed WooCommerce and I, it seems to be running quite nicely. But my question is, can uh, multiple sites using, all using WooCommerce, um, pull from the same um, inventory, pictures, descriptions, uh, inventory. And if you update one, do you update all, all of them? And if, if so, then does anybody can point me to the how to do it? Or, and this, I, if this is an inappropriate question, then let me know. But uh, are the people, some, some of the people on the site seem to be pretty knowledgeable. So are some of the people on, on this site uh, for hire? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of consultants there, I'm sure. Yeah. There's a lot okay. of people. You have to scope kind of the issue of what you want to accomplish. Anybody address what uh, Pierre is talking about or has worked on it? Is it a multi-site setup? Mm -hmm. Multi-site on the same server? Yeah, because my understanding is if you do multi-site, then WooCommerce, you can do what you're doing. Um, one WooCommerce site, that means three sites will be able to share it. Okay. That's what you're getting at, right? Multi-site yeah, is right. multiple yeah. WordPress sites running on yeah. one WordPress install, and the plugin code is shared and updated once between all the sites. Right? That's right. And so the WooCommerce would be one inventory site or product yeah, and site. Inventory and the description would be updated on the quote unquote master. And then uh, it yeah, would, no, it would no, go. No, no, no. Multi site wouldn't do that. No, no. No, because it's a different config for every site, right? It's a network of sites, but the, the configuration of WooCommerce is not shared between all the multi sites. Okay. So that can't be done. Hmm? The documentation says it does. Why, why would that, why would it? Because those sites are independent of each other. They use the same code for plugins, but the config is separate and separate database instances. You, you would need a, a database specialist to sync between yeah. one uh, WordPress multi-site to the others. Dan, I'm not, I'm not mistaken, right, Dan? Like if you have multi-site, it's not going to share WooCommerce's inventory levels between the different sites by default. No, the, the sharing structure is on the uh, theme level and the plugin level. Right. 
So, but not in the dead. I mean, that's how you can have yeah, a different site. WooCommerce sites. is a plugin. Right. Yeah, right. but the data is saved in the database, not the files. Right, and there's only one database. Right. No, but I don't I mean, think there's a database no, for, each, for each site. For each you have you have the tables for each site. Right. Anyway, it's it's a bit you know the rabbit hole here. But what I would suggest, Pierre, is to look for a database specialist which can sync the WooCommerce uh, plugin database between other sites. Mm -hmm. Right. I guess ultimately, I don't have you know a hundred thousand SKUs, so. If it's a very difficult and costly endeavor, then I guess manual it's going to be. But uh, uh, if, there, it, if there was an easy way, I would there, have definitely embarked on that one. There is a there is a product called Integramat, which is an interesting product. It's uh, it's not a WordPress product. It's a it's a software as a service. What they call inter, um, Internet Platform as a Service (IPaaS). Um, and what it is is basically a way to use the REST API between multiple apps. WordPress is one of those. Where you, could, where, you, where you can call the REST API WordPress, retrieve some data, and then you can potentially call another REST API in, in another WordPress site and copy that data across. And so Actually, Alex, there, there is a, uh, if you Google um, WooCommerce API, you'll see the, docu the REST documentation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it can be run uh, as any WordPress that can, as a headless or serverless one. Um, and do it all by API calls. Yeah, I, mean, I think call. that's what WordPress is now currently, the thinking is that that's the way WordPress is evolving. Yeah, is so instead of like separate that. the content from those front ends of for various purposes on different platforms, but all making calls to the same core data and uh, right. Right. code. Instead of, instead of going directly to the database, you go through the REST API. So this is Integramat. We, we, our company actually does some work in it. So um, if you look for the, whoops. Uh, you look at the WordPress, there's, there's supports like 300 different apps. So if you look at the WordPress app, you can um, basically watch information happening in your system. And then based on that information, then continue creating a scenario that actually um, watches posts, watches pages, categories, comments, uh, media items, users, tags, you can make an API call, you can search for a taxonomy. So potentially you could actually, using make an API call, you could call an arbitrary WordPress API call, and then that could be a WooCommerce API call, and then get data from that, and then, and then create a chain of these scenarios using WordPress to kind of, uh, instead of writing code to do this, you could actually create um, integration between multiple WordPress sites. That's one approach, potentially. Um, but you know, but normally this would be a custom coding exercise that would require quite a bit of error, error checking and, and handling, and it's uh, probably be. I mean, again, uh, there might be a plugin that supports something like this. I mean, what's what's the um, use case? Why is the inventory shared between multiple sites? You have multiple like um, affiliate kind of outputs there, or what? Yeah, um, it's basically a, a product that uh, caters to different type of consumers. So the website is, becomes very convoluted. Huh. So we're trying to simplify the website and build, instead of having one website with multiple you know, subsection, mm -hmm. uh, the URL is, is, um, is a big part of the SEOing strategy. Oh. And we want to bring the people that are looking for Workbench to this site, the people looking for a different product to a different site. But yet ultimately, they're, they all kind of sort of share the same uh, SKUs. I see, wow. That's um, an interesting project. Yeah. So there is a plugin that I had looked at a long time back, but I don't know how good that is. It's called Woo Multi Store. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, that sounds good. That's a good name. <laughs> yeah. So it actually, as far as I remember, it does sync. Uh, you basically end up with one inventory, and you can have multi, uh, WooCommerce multi site pull from that inventory, as well as you can also set. Uh, inventory for each store wow look at that ask ask and you shall receive eh? use only one stock for all your mm -hmm. web stores look at that wow hey this guy looks like you man <laughs> <laughs> the sales guy ready to take orders right that's pretty cool this this looks very i mean i hope it's supported it's not cheap but uh but yeah so it's a single network license that would be like a network so a multi-site, obviously, multi-site network. Um, very cool. Very interesting. 
Good find. Well done, Cindy. Found another one. Um, wp one stockcom Looks pretty. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, one stock. Yeah, look yeah. at that. Well, uh, now that we'll, have to, we'll put this one up. That's good. Yeah. One stock for WooCommerce. Easy way to sync your stock. Indeed. That makes sense. You have multiple different stores for different countries, and you have one set of stock for for all the different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Very nice. I I'm guess I'm not the only one with that problem. Well, the, the, it's not a, it's a, it's a, it's a marketing sales issue, right? Yeah. Yeah. An opportunity. It's an opportunity. It's not just a problem. Um, and obviously this is uh yeah. So you've got one multi that's just cheaper than the other one. This is actually Euro. No, oh, this is uh, US dollar. That yeah. wool multi-store uh, guy in the picture is quite the character. Talk about a, a, a used car salesman. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It could be any kind of salesperson. Like, I mean, it's, it's, well, I'm just, you know, saying, I mean, no, no, no. Me like a used car salesman. It's, it's is a good, it's a good, I, I actually really like the way they, they, they articulated their value prop here. Um, yeah. So easily distribute the same product to multiple stores too. So you say, I have a product. I want to now populate multiple stores with that product. Boom. Mm-hmm. Instead of having to copy and paste it. Right. Yeah. This looks good. This looks really good. Hmm. This looks like a really, really well put together commercial plugin. It's 2017. Mm-hmm. It's not that new, actually. So, um, you know, this is not like a, this is not something that's been around for too long, but it's probably worthwhile, you know, maybe, I don't know if there's a trial or something. Check this one out. Check out one stock. If there's two, there's probably another couple out there too. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, because if you, if you have two of them, there must be, this must be a, uh, here's a video that shows you how it works. Right. So you've got, this I think thing. on investigation, Alex will find that there's quite a sub market for this, just in the same way that there's quite a marketplace for memberships. Yeah. Uh, for for sure. sites, right. For and sure. you would never know it until you needed one and you went to investigate and then you'd be amazed at how many places in, you Absolutely. know, Absolutely. But so I'm sure got- it's the same case with WooCommerce, but I think the key here is that everybody is, that you should be thinking of using the API wherever possible, because that's really the direction for all this programming activity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like to look at these type of plugins, these really big investments to see like what the change log is. It's very, uh, you can see it goes back. Uh, no, it's, all, it's going on uh, over four years now. So, so that's pretty good, right? And then you could, you could probably see if this one has that to kind of get an idea of what, they, what the, their success level is, right? Because- uh, I like that. You know, because you, you don't, this is the kind of thing where you purchase and buy in, you're using this for the long term, right? Yeah. Your, your company is running, you're going to be dependent on, this is like the core DNA of your system, right? So I can already tell, like, for example, it was very easy for me to find the change log for this uh, on this site under doc, uh, on documentation, whereas this one, it has it, but look at this, you've got two, two getting started articles. So you can already tell that this one is probably fairly less new mature, less mature yeah Let, potentially less mature it's, it's less cheaper uh, uh sorry it's cheaper not less cheaper it's cheaper um but still i mean it's something to investigate and explore right um because um you may you may not need all the functionality of what this does or maybe it's, it's too complex right but these are this is excellent this is a really good um i think you got you i think you got your money's worth pierre this uh this uh Meet up. <laughs> I, I sure did. Thank you. Yeah, right on. Good stuff. Okay. Let's move on. Um, very cool. I learned, uh, never even thought something like this would be possible, but in sure indeed, no, indeed it is. Um, uh, let's see here. So, okay. Uh, thank you, Cindy, for that. Uh, let's see. We have Kathy. Uh, I have a question about regarding the best plugins for membership site that has events. Kathy, want to talk a little bit about your question? So I'm fairly new to WordPress. I've built just um, fairly simple sites, but I've got a membership group that I support. It's a small closed group, nonprofit. Um, and the real purpose of the group is to share information, but they hold meetings eight times a year. So I need to be able to, um, have the members sign in and sign up for the meetings. I need a little bit of functionality in terms of uh, them being able to add guests. And if they add a guest, uh, the guest needs to pay. So 
I'm good with just a simple link to PayPal for that payment. The, the members uh, pay a subscription at the beginning of each year. So I'd like to have the functionality for them to renew their payments um, each year. And I'm just looking for some guidance. There's so many different plugins out there and I'm wondering, is it uh, more than one plugin that I would need to get that functionality? I am using um, WordPress with Elementor. And yeah, if you could just give me some, some of your insights as to maybe what, uh, what plugins I should look at. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a good question. And I have my own opinions, but I'd like to hear from other folks on this call what they, what they think. Anybody have direct experience with membership plugins with events? Well, since you won't talk, Alec, I'll talk about it. <laughs> because I'm using one you recommended. Yeah. Uh, there's something called Ultimate Member Plugin. And Alec uses it for his University of Michigan work. Michigan or Michigan State? Michigan, yeah. University of Michigan. Michigan. And I use it for our church where we wanted to hide meetings of minutes and stuff that we don't want the outside world looking at uh, behind a wall. The complication here is you're also looking at payment management. And that would almost seem to sound like she should be looking at some sort of sub subscription management site to include in there, right? Ultimate member has ability to create um, extensions for payment. A lot of them do. So just like this one store multi-site thing or sort of this multi-store thing we talked about, this particular topic has been ongoing since WordPress effectively started. There are probably on the order of 40 to maybe even as many as 50, 60 individual membership plugins of all stripes and colors. Very, very, very complicated uh, potential, what I call surface area for functionality. One of the main things you'll find, this is what I found so far at least, I'm not by no means an expert in WordPress plugins for memberships, but they all have their various focus areas. So some are based specifically for digital downloads, meaning that you, it's a membership where there's a physical thing that you're selling uh, or a, a, a virtual thing that you have a subscription to get access to like lessons or PDFs or some material or videos. And so they're not selling a physical thing. There's a subscription for potential access to documents or, do, uh, or access to some kind of content. And so they have a reselling thing, but they also have connected to, so like, I think there's one called um, easy, um, download, easy Downloads or something like that, or EDD, I think it's called. Um, so easy there's a digital lot. Digital Downloads. Yeah, yeah. And so this, Chris Lemma, I have to say, has some of the best, content on this whole thing. I mean, he's, he's written some of the best review plugins and he co uh, continuously updates his plugin reviews, or at least he has I mean, Actually, now that I look at it, he doesn't have that many new recent ones, but he's done a lot in over the last several years. So you could, I mean, this goes on, right? There's a lot. And he actually goes into detail on every one of these plugins and he has best of a certain year. This, the state of the art on this evolves as well. So the problem here is you can read a, this article in 2016 and it will be, it'll be four years old, right? And so he, you know, and you'll see he did, he looked at the plugins in 2015. And so now he talks about these member press. These are all very good. These are all very good plugins. Um, the thing is, is that you want to sell events and events is a whole nother set of plugins for WordPress. Because you want event registration, you want early birds, you want all this, and then you want to tie those together. And so what you're looking for is a membership plugin that allows you to either integrate with an events plugin or that has that kind of events functionality. And that's a harder find because events has its own surface area for complexity. Okay. Um, and my conclusion on this, even though I love WordPress, is that if your needs for membership sites gets beyond a particular certain area, you have to choose the right plugins and use them. But if you really want an all one membership so solution, WordPress is not the right answer to it. Because in my mind, WordPress, you can, you have to attach a lot. If you have a lot of really complex membership needs and a lot of complex 
membership levels and pro rating and um, different renewal rate, uh, renewal periods and your events have different registrations. It's very hard to find plugins that actually meet a lot of those needs. And so we, we recommend Wild Apricot, which is not even a WordPress platform. Wild Apricot is for membership based organizations and it has a lot of the features all in one module. Uh, so the, all, and it's a monthly fee. You don't, you don't install the software. It's a software as a service product. And so that's what our company actually recommends, mostly because assembling the necessary plugins and, and researching the ones you need is a task in and of itself. And then once you choose those plugins, you're just like with the other discussion, you're really stuck with them. So you have to find the right ones. I personally haven't found a plugin for memberships that has, a div that has built in a really good event management system. If you read, if you read a lot of these, uh, these reviews, you'll see that um, not, like, I think WooCommerce memberships I don't even think, I don't think it has an events feature for it, right? So you would use like to do the event calendar, you would use the events calendar. Then you'd have to figure out a way to integrate them together. So for example, when somebody logged in, maybe for certain membership level, they only see certain events. Well, that, that may be a requirement of yours. It may not be, but you got to make sure that the functionality supports that, right? So, and, and then there's also, there's a, there's a difference between subscription plugins and membership plugins. And he even has on this, on this, this, um, this page that I found, uh, this, this, this is all membership sites. He has, don't confuse memberships and subscriptions because they are the same, different. Subscriptions, when you subscribe to some kind of content, memberships is a different thing. And so you find subscription plugins that do a subscription thing. Um, so you see, membership is a notion of belonging. It's a relational concept. It's nothing about cost or price, although they have cost to them. And so they're exclusive, they have benefits. So subscription is a financial concept. It's a revenue agreement. And so there's nothing about belonging. Subscription plugins are normally a lot simpler and easier. Um, and so, you know, there's, and so when you look at plugins, you'll see there's a lot of, uh, a lot of these kind of terminology. This is a really, really deep area of plugins. There's probably in my mind, one of the deepest actually, because of the variety of plugins that are out there. So I like ultimate member because ultimate member allows you to register. I, I think it has a, a, a fee, it's very easy to configure. You can, you can configure a very, um, it's simple. There's a free version of it. You don't have to pay for it out of the box. It has, um, it has a good, I mean, it's something that I've installed and I've used with WordPress um, and it's got extensions. So if you want to, for example, uh, integrate with WooCommerce to actually take money, you actually use WooCommerce to take money. Uh, so, you, so you actually have to you know, con, you know, integrate it with WooCommerce, which gives you a lot of other stuff. Uh, but they, in, in and of itself, they don't have a pay for membership. They use WooCommerce to take money, right? So here's an example of where they, they actually like, identify um, how to use the Woo WooCommerce extension. And then you can specify who can access this content and you have extensions that you can set up with WooCommerce. And then they have an, I have a, a billing account and then they, have, they can take money based on your membership. So your membership then becomes an, a WooCommerce account and they share that information. Um, you can you can tell like this just the documentation on this particular plugin has quite a bit of uh, information but the setup of it this particular plugin is straightforward you set it for form you have somebody that can register for a site it creates a user uh, in wordpress then you have restriction on contents so who can see what menu items can be hidden or shown depending on what you're logged in as and uh, but but again again like i said you look at this plugin the word events does not appear in this, in this, uh, in this information. In fact, um, yeah, the event driven architecture that has nothing to do with events. Right. So you can see right away, like if you want to do events, well, that's a completely different plugin. And then you have to make sure that they can work with each other. And that act of finding plugins that commensurately work with each other is the task. And this is why I don't think WordPress is good for that. Because if you want to start evolving it, you're going to be spending an enormous amount of time vetting plugins that have to work with each other. And as soon as they don't, you're going to have to do custom coding. And the, the cost of it goes straight through the roof. Like it just starts out as one thing. And so it all depends on your scope of what you want to do. The scope you have to write out in paper. I wanted to do this, 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 and this. Do bullet points for that and then go to each plugin and say, does it meet 80% of my needs? If something meets 100% of my needs, great. That's what you found. But if it says this meets 50% of my needs, then I have to find this plugin that meets this. And so in the case of our, I have, we actually have a write-up on our Michigan, on our website, because we, we I, um, I'll find you this uh, article and I'll share it in the, 
in the link because we actually wrote up, you know, what it takes to build a membership site. And we had to use five plugins and not all of them were free. Actually, there was a, a, a plugin that we had to use that wasn't free. Um, and this, we wrote this up when we developed the University of Michigan site, this one right here. So I, so I, this was written up, you know, going on uh, three years now, uh, this site is still running, but uh, we talk about the various plugins and all the things that we did. And then there's a membership directory and then there's, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different plugins we're using, right? So wow. ultimate members for memberships, membership directory, integrated protected access, MailPoet is for email marketing, replacing stuff like MailChimp so you can email these people and get them to actually do stuff. WooCommerce is for selling stuff like an online store. Um, you could potentially sell the memberships with that as with integration. We do not sell memberships on this site. It's free memberships. So I don't even have that configured. I didn't like, we spent a whole summer bu building this thing. The event calendars, event management, our events are free. They're completely not integrated with members. Or if they do take money, I build a ninja form to collect money and, and take money completely irrespective of the membership level. I could hide events based on where I publish the event calendar. So I can kind of restrict it, but still there isn't an inherent control of the event module by based on the membership level. And then duplicate posts is just for being able to quickly post to post pages. And this, this collection of plugins is modeled over the system we use called Wild Apricot, which contains all the functionality of these in one monthly package based on the size of the database that you're using. So the benefit of using WordPress, obviously, it's infinitely extensible. You can have a database of a million members if you want. You don't have to pay extra for it. You have to just maintain and make sure it's performant. You have to back it up. You have to back up your plugins. Whereas you could go to a wild apricot type system. You pay a monthly fee for the, or a yearly fee for the size of your database, and you get all this kind of functionality built in. It doesn't give you all the flexibility of themes. It doesn't give you, it doesn't have plugins. There's a lot of things it doesn't have, but it's a trade-off that you have to make. And so, um, as you can tell, I'm pretty like, I'm pretty like, it is, I can't say that one will be better than others, but I will tell you one thing. WordPress requires a lot of research, a lot of decision-making, a lot of compromises and trade-offs that you're going to have to make. Okay. I thought it was just me, but. <laughs> it's not just you, Kathy. It's a very, it's, you, okay. have to, you have to evaluate. You have to, you have to install a bunch of plugins and see okay. how they run. You have to spend a lot of time, right? Uh, but like, and, 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 and so there are whole companies that are built on outside of uh, just on top of building membership based sites. So this is wild apricot. And so this is like, you know, this is, this includes hosting, includes SSL, includes backups. There's no plugins. And you, you know, if you have 500 members or higher contacts in your database, it's 90 bucks a month. Right. So that becomes like almost a thousand dollars a year, but you've got this, you know, inter well integrated solution set that does a lot of stuff will be, will be told, Well, you can pay 15 bucks a month or 10 bucks a month for hosting, but you might have to buy a few hundred dollars worth of plugins every year uh, that potentially could do more than, than what Wild Apricot could, but you've got to build it, right? You've got to assemble it. You've got to curate all of those decisions. Yeah, and I, I have looked at uh, Wild Apricot, yeah. but like you say, I, the themes I wasn't very impressed with and um, you can use Wild Apricot. WordPress as a front end for Wild Apricot too. Okay, and and the group's really small. I mean, it's only about sixty people. And that's great. You could use it under the um, the potentially even the free plan if it's under fifty, but definitely the personal one. Couldn't uh, couldn't do the payment functionality with a free plan. Ah, right. That's right. Because if you take money, you have to pay money, right? Would you expect to actually have a free solution where you take money but you don't have to pay anything for it? Well, the group, we, we take, the money that we take actually just goes to, uh, to host the event. It's not, there's no profit made at all. Let me disabuse you of that right <laughs> now. Like, this is not WordPress related. Let me disabuse yeah. you. If you want to run a digital, uh, the, the, the membership organization with a digital DNA that has digital footprint of some sort, you need a budget of some sort. It's, and in my mind, it's 10 to 20% of the money you bring in has to be directly, not for the event, but for the infrastructure of your organization. If you do not do it, your organization won't survive. Full stop, period, right? So that means that if you think you're gonna run the technology for free and take money, but not pay anything for it at all, other than let's say the hosting, you're not gonna be able to build a solution for it. Mm -hmm. You're gonna pay money somewhere for the software because this kind of software 
always has is predicate it's charged for because people that use it make money on it it's not like a hobby site it's like it's it's a revenue generation system that generates money potentially in events potentially an online store the memberships themselves they, there's potentially multiple lines of income and so the software underneath some almost all of it has free versions the plugins for wordpress but at, you you very much you, you quickly reach as soon as you start taking money you got to be paying money at minimum you're going to be paying commissions for PayPal and Stripe payment. So you're going to be at least 2.9% of your revenue is going to be going to that right off the bat, yeah. right? If you're doing online payments. So yeah. right there, right? You already have that. So, so it's a, uh, you know, it's like when you undertake this, you should allocate money, a budget for the build out of this. And if you don't do that, you're not going to get much of a solution. Okay. My That's opinion. good. In my opinion. Anyone That's else good. have anything on that? Here's another site that was shared by Jacques, which is also good. Um, this is um, uh, the five, this is a new one. This is good, five best membership plugins. Um, so this is a fairly new one. Um, am I sharing my screen? I'm not sharing my screen. Um, so this one is uh, what to look in a membership plugin. This is from 2020. So this is five of them. This is on WP Beginner. Um, yeah, so they talk about so member press. Yeah, that's this has been on for a long time. Member press is really good. Um, again, like you see, no events, right? You, you see, there's setup, content access control, content dripping, integrations, payment gateways. All right, so that's and it's cost one hundred twenty dollars a year, right? So cheaper than Wild Apricot by a lot, right? It's in the hundreds instead of the thousands of dollars per year, but you get you get like ten percent of Wild Apricot's functionality with this plugin or maybe 15%, right? LearnDash is not even a membership management system. This is a learning management system. So this, is, this has to do specifically with subscriptions to learning. Uh, so if you wanna sell courses and do this kind of stuff and built in community features and quizzes, very, very good product. But this is a very particular kind of membership. So I wouldn't put this in here. Teachable is also an LMS, so that's not really a membership plugin. This is a membership plugin for restricting content. Um, uh, again, as you can see, it, it has nothing to do with events, right? It's just restricting content and membership. And then S2 member have used this one. This is a lot of functionality. There's a free base plugin. It has a lot of functionality, um, a lot of really complex ways to set up membership levels. Um, but it's not very user friendly. And that's true. I've used this one before. I found it to be very non-user friendly. Um, it's, it does what it needs to do, but not a, not a huge fan of that one. So this review is frankly, two membership plugins and several learning management plugins. So right off the bat, this is not a learn, this is not a membership plugin review. So it's very hard to find these kind of reviews that are really, um, you know, really good because you're reading them and you're like, well, what is this actually doing? Well, this is actually selling learning material. That's not necessarily my scope. So I wouldn't mind. I mean, it's good at what it does. It's, there's a whole learning management system, but if I don't need that, that's not the plugin. That I, and by, by the way, Wild Apricot doesn't have a learning management system. So if you need that, and you know, that's not the thing to choose for because you'd have to integrate with some other LMS of some sort. Um, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a ton of these. I, I see Carl put another one in, simple membership plugin. There are literally 30 or 40. All you do is the word, search for the word membership in the, in the, in the, in the plugin repo, and you'll see there's, the, there's hundreds of them probably, but there's definitely 30 or 40. In the Chris Lemma site uh, that I pointed you to, this site here, and just this particular category, Chris Lemma category membership there, there, you can spend a whole day reading this stuff there. And it's very well written and it's very good. Very, very insightful, very detailed, a lot of comparisons. Um, um, here's actually, okay. Here's a new one here. Let's see what I haven't seen this one. So um, let's see if they talk about um, solutions. Okay. So there's, so yeah, so he's been writing about this for six years. So this guy knows his stuff about this. I have to say, if I, if I were to teach anybody's advice. So, so you see, he says, I don't include learning solutions. It's, it's good he doesn't because it has nothing to do with membership. That's a special kind of membership. I mean, it has nothing to do with membership. So member stack, never even heard of this one. Brand new one. It's probably very, very good. Um, Podia, I've never heard of this one either. Um, but I, actually these, uh, yeah, these are not WordPress. These are actually non WordPress plugins. Yeah. Um, Online courses. So this is an online course ones. 
putting membership first, member press. This has been around forever. That's a good one. Um, let's see if he talks about multiple ultimate member here. WP Fusion, Restrict Content, Paid Memberships Pro. Yeah, that's a good one too. That's a big one. Um, Wishlist Member. I don't know about that one. I had never heard of that one. Um, so he doesn't talk about ultimate member. So I think he's actually getting paid to review these lists right now, to be honest with you. I actually don't, because because he used to he used to write about like 20, 30 of them. Now he's only writing about ones I think that are paying him. And so I don't know. I take a, I take this with a grain of salt a little bit, but but um, there's still a lot of content in here. That's great. Okay, so it's a good good you question. Save me a bit of time, but hmm? you save me a little bit of time. I, like yeah, I mean, like I'm pointing focused, to some, yeah. it's research, right? But like again, yeah. like if you don't want to do if you don't want to invest that time of finding all the right solutions for what you need, I can't really say. But based on what you tell me, I can't really say okay, use this plugin. It, it would be a disservice to you because. It may actually not be, but I can tell you right now, the deal of event integration with um, with the membership plugins is very hard to find. Okay. It's very well. Um, so, um, okay. Uh, who else has got questions? We've got another half hour to go. Anybody? Nobody has questions. Solved all your problems? Really? You guys want to go home? You want to? Are you already home? <laughs> uh, hey, if if I've got the ears of the experts, I'll I'll ask a question. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, is it okay if I ask a question? Of course. Okay. Um, in terms of WooCommerce, uh, there seems to be an awful lot of um, feedback on which is the best theme or which is the the most compatible uh, editor so do do you have any recommendations on um, either cheap or free and uh, how much value is there to getting a paid theme versus one of the free ones is, is that one of the errors I don't want to do an uh, once again get a cheap theme and then end up with poor results because I cheaped out on 50 bucks or 150 bucks, whatever that is. I'm not really a WooCommerce expert to really comment on it, but I'm, I'll just say that whenever you pay for something, you're getting support. And so as long as the company that's generating it is going to continue being in a business, at least you're going to continue to get value from that payment. It's not necessarily guaranteed that you pay for something and it's really good though. I, we have a theme that I'm using now that we paid for many years ago and it's not really that, I mean, it's bloated and it does a lot of stuff and it's, it's performance is poor. So it's not always a sure thing that when you pay for something, you're going to get a, a good product, to be honest with you. Um, That's why I'm asking for a recommendation. I mean, I don't mind paying for it, but um, uh, everybody that sells a website is probably going to have a decent website. <laughs> well, well, Priya, I can uh, I can suggest based on my experience. Uh, first of all, yes, uh, I would uh, pay for a theme just to know that I'm getting the support. Okay. Having, having said that, I would stay away from theme forest themes, uh, which are usually very very bloated and heavy on the design, but very not functional on the development part. I, I didn't hear what you said at the very beginning. You said that you'd stay away from websites, sorry? Theme Forest. Theme Forest is a marketplace for various types of themes, plugins, etc. And uh, they're not very uh, de developer friendly, meaning they, they usually uh, make sites slow, sluggish. They look very good, but once you start using them, you know, you start banging your head in the wall. Yeah, okay. So do you recommend any? Uh, yeah, I, I've been using a theme called Generate Press, which is actually a guy from uh, Vancouver Island. And he does a, a great job of, he has, he has two versions. He has the free version and the paid version. And they're both not, I mean, the paid version is like $50 a year. It's not really, it's a, it's a no brainer to to buy it from him and to support him. And he has an amazing support uh, forum 
where he himself or one of his developers answer. And okay. I found that uh, this is a great uh, uh, theme or, or framework to, to build upon. And it's really quick, it's, it works fast, it has features. The, the only downside is it's not like, you know, fully uh, um, designed. You have to sort of put in your, your uh, part of the design. So it's a great infrastructure. You have some, they have a, a new option called sites where you can actually load the, the, the frame, the theme with the uh, pre-made design, but it's not like the theme for our designs, right? Uh, but having said that, you know, you, you go, you use that uh, theme, you know, you, you, you sleep well at night. You know that the guy has your back. If you have questions, he answers them. Uh, he can, he sends you pieces of code. I have, I have had great experience with him for the past five years. And it, he keeps on developing and he, he's adding features and he adds plugins and he, he's really, uh, I, I highly recommend Generate Press. Awesome. I, can see, I can see that, yeah, uh, WordPress Toronto uses Generate Press. So our, our website, um, WP Toronto, also okay. uses it. Uh, so that, there it is right there, Generate Yeah, it's, it's a vanilla theme and that's good because, you know, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't come bloated, but you can, you can load on it and you can uh, add your own designs or use one of the pre-made designs. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. No, it, it's definitely, if I were to build a new site, and we are actually, we're going to use it, we're working with Dan. But this is, I've, I've seen it enough times and I've seen the continuous improvement of this particular framework. Uh, from multiple places that uh, tells me that there's something good going on here. Uh, on the other hand, what, 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 what Dan was saying is that if you go and find theme forest themes, like I've used this one on a project and, you know, it started out as a good theme, but you know, four or five years later, it's so bloated and it, it takes down our site regularly now. So the wow. site I'm using on, we've removed a host. We thought it was the host. It wasn't the host. We turned off a bunch of plugins and literally the site will just, go down, it'll max out the CPU, max out the, um, the, the memory of a gigabyte of memory allocated, and it will just, uh, 503 error, just, and then it basically has to, it, it gets automatically restarted, but it, it takes down the site for a few minutes. And it's, and it's slow, right? And it, I'm pretty sure it's the theme. I'm pretty sure it's something related. It uses Visual Composer. It's got its own page builder inside of it as well. That's kind of like a ripoff of Visual Composer. It's got like five extra plugins now. I mean, it does a shitload of stuff. It's like baits for content. It's, it's a huge theme with, you know, blazing fast websites, right? Like <laughs> blazing fast, right? Like, no, it's not blazing fast at all. Now, it, maybe the way that we've done something with it, but I doubt it. We're not doing anything really overly complicated. It is by no means blazing fast, right? So very hard to say, like, you know, like this looks amazing, right? It's got all of this stuff, but but it's not good. I have personal experience with it. And this is a theme that's been around for seven years, right? This is a theme that has hundreds of thousands, like on ThemeForce, 93,000 sales, 20,000 comments, you know, 4.3 wow. reviews, right? This is like a top, 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 top theme, right? Right? Uh -huh. But my experience has been horrible with it, right? It did what it did in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, five years later, it's... It's barely usable, right? It's just, it's slow. It's not, it's not, it's not performant, right? It's too much. It does too much for not, a, not enough of a return, right? Um, now, Jacques, okay, here's a couple of other uh, things came up. Uh, so when, 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 when Dan says stay away from theme forest, he means anything that you would buy from Envato Market here, right? Is it Envato Market? Yeah, this is theme forest. So basically, all these 47,000 themes, don't touch them with a seven foot pole. <laughs> I think that's probably a lot. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had lots of experience in most of the sites that started off here, the sites that got inherited from other clients and stuff, they got moved to other frameworks. Yeah, so for example, if you look at the e-commerce, the WooCommerce subcategory, there's specific WooCommerce themes and mm -hmm. there are lots of themes here, right? There's tons of themes here and they all look wonderful and they all, they're all commercial. But what Dan is saying is, and I, I guess- They look I, beautiful to start to use them. Yeah, they're just not well designed and they're probably not bespoke. They're, they, they're probably, they're, they're, they're used, but they're probably not as, as best as it could be. 
I, I, it's not to say not, you know, all of them are bad, I don't think, but it's very hard to know which ones are good or bad though, right? Because I pointed to one that has a lot of reviews. They all have lots of sales here, right? According to this, lots of reviews. Well, not all of them, but, but it's kind of hard to tell. It's like, are they actually good? Are they being used? Did somebody buy them and just ended up not using it? Like, mm -hmm. very hard to tell. Whereas this is more of like what you would call a boutique, right? This is a developer. They, they, they have a framework. It's, a, it's not the final theme. You probably have to add your own functionality to it. But you can see they value security, small size, speeds, accessible, search engine optimized, no dependencies. Um, so they don't need jQuery. That's amazing. They don't even use jQuery in their theme. Um, and then, but then the, the trade-off is you're going to have to build something yourself from a design perspective, or you're going to have to um, choose one of these site library themes. And I think they have some some yeah, there are some WooCommerce options. There's some WooCommerce stuff in here, looks like, right? Like merch, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So WooShop, uh, right? So. Yeah. And there's also another framework, uh, the Genesis framework, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, they are also pretty light. Uh, we were testing that out for a site when we were doing building our WooCommerce site. So Genesis uh, is now owned by StudioPress, but it's, it's been there for a while, like a decade now. I think this is also if you do WP Engine site. Yeah, they purchased get this free with it, right? Yeah, but yeah. it's pretty fast. When we were running our Google speed tests, the mobile site was basically in the higher 80s and the desktop was 97, 98. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. WP Engine is free access and support for all Studio Press themes. So they actually, they give you the Genesis framework. Uh, uh, four months free now. Okay, at least I thought they actually get it. You could get it for free, but okay. And they get 36 freemium themes. If you, if you host in WP Engine, they give this. So it's interesting what, what happened. Like a lot of the hosting companies bought themes. So mm -hmm. in this case, WP Engine bought this whole company. And say, so if you host with us, we're going to give you these amazing themes. That's a really good deal because you normally pay for Genesis. So now you get this part of your, well, now mind okay. you, WP Engine costs more than a few bucks a month, right? Yeah, but you can still buy the Genesis oh, yeah. uh, framework and theme separately. Yeah, for sure. I was just mentioning that. Yeah, so it's called Studio Press is the name of the, um, um, yeah, so yeah. they have themes here. There's a framework. You can buy the th framework, which is, again, not the final theme. It's something you design, but these guys have probably a lot more um, um, themes already built out, um, but you can see you've got, you know, a whole bunch of e-commerce themes here, right? Yeah. Um, and um, you can specify, like, you know, two column layouts, you know, you can just, you could see, and then, and then you could see, um, these are specifically made by this company, right? So studio press is the, is the company that owns generate press. Um, so that's another one. And another one mentioned here is Astra, another, another theme framework. So we're talking now about theme frameworks. We're not really talking about specific themes, but rather foundations for themes. And then they have themes that, uh, 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 go on it. Um, any comments on Astra, Dan? I've used it uh, several times. I just uh, I just heard from other users that the support is not as good as Generate Press support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it's also a framework, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. also a framework. It's very lightweight, yeah. fast, and lots of options. Um, yeah. Uh, to to set up the site. Yeah, it's a little bit cheaper, I think. So it's a little bit yeah. cheaper, I think, than some of these other ones. So if you if you oh. shop around, like this is the kind of thing that you should pay good money for. This is not something that you should like, you know, like when you're choosing a framework and a theme, and especially one of a, that's going to be built for you potentially, or one that's there, you should really. And then you have to experiment with it, right? Then you have to just you have to evaluate it because you have to see is it actually going to work for you, which is hard to do sometimes, just like with a page build. Pull their plugins. Uh, Jock uh, wants to plug. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm happy to do that. Plug the WordPress meetup coming up that he's running uh, on Thursday, April 23rd uh, at three o'clock. Um, so this is called Review of WordPress Page Builders versus Theme Builders. Uh, and so there's going to be. Um, I didn't. I don't even know what a theme builder is. I didn't think there's such a thing as a theme builder. Yeah. But okay, um, so four hours, uh, we have a, three, a four hour Zoom, a three hour 
seminar. It's got 40 people already registered. So this should be a very interesting uh, uh, to thing to check into two days from now. So that's on our WordPress meetup. Mm -hmm. and Chuck, you want to say anything about it? Uh, uh, some of the theme forest themes and uh, which uh, uh, despite the uh, uh, allegations. Otherwise, uh, they have some pretty good speed uh, performance uh, uh, associated with them. But uh, we'll look at uh, the idea of a theme builder. And a theme builder is just a theme that has either a third party uh, page builder like uh, Visual Composer is the most often used. Uh, but some have their own, as in the case of Avada and uh, the X and so forth. They have uh, uh, their own uh, 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 page builders. Uh, Cornerstone and Fusion uh, uh, are the uh, their own uh, things. And so the interesting thing is, is that uh, page builders are moving up and doing things that themes used to do. Uh, in terms of customizer, theme options, and, and so forth, and the ability to develop headers and uh, footers and uh, 404 pages and so on and so forth, while theme builders are coming down and they're adding not only to the theme options that you have available, but you also have available now uh, uh, builders that can do things as good as, uh, if not uh, better than, uh, the uh, page builders in terms of a uh, page layout, uh, styling, uh, custom, uh, or sorry, uh, yeah, custom post type support and so forth. It's, uh, uh, it, you know, it's a, uh, an open bazaar market now um, uh, as themes and page builders are uh, converging and coinciding in terms of the various functions and features they uh, offer. It's uh, 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 not a simple uh, marketplace because uh, things are not even among the various uh, products as to how well they support, uh, for example, uh, uh, the ability to have uh, templates and templates that uh, can be uh, uh, reused and edited and globally edited or specifically edited, edited and so forth. Big, big marketplace, uh, lots of changes happening. Uh, a tough topic actually, as it turns out, uh, 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 to uh, consider all the options. Yeah, most well, definitely. Even though Gutenberg is around, people are, are pretty much ignoring it, I can see. They're basically yeah, uh, interestingly, uh, some of the major page builders mm -hmm. and some of the theme builders are now uh, adding uh, key uh, capabilities uh, and integrations with Gutenberg. Okay. The fundamental problem with Gutenberg is uh, when you do a layout of a, a Gutenberg page, you have uh, semi uh, uh, live or uh, YZWIG. Uh, uh, approach uh, yeah. the page that you work on, and then when you see it uh, uh, viewed, are two different things. Totally. Yeah. Still, they get rid of that and, and become live. The, yeah. the the company that's doing the best there is a company called Cadence. They're out in Missoula, Montana, <laughs> and they come close to allowing you to see when you use the Cadence uh, tools. Uh, uh, what you see is what you get uh, type uh, live page editing, uh, which is uh, 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 tools like Divi, uh, Beaver Builder, Elementor Pro. I mean, there's just so many good page builders uh, that do uh, live uh, uh, drag and drop uh, development. Uh, uh, Breezy Pro and so on and so forth has carried it further, uh, such that uh, you know you uh, uh, Gutenberg just has a big gap to close, and they, I surprised. I thought they would have it by this time. Oh yeah, no, just about two years in, and they still haven't closed that gap. 
Oh yeah, it's going to take, I'm not sure. I think there's always going to be an option that's kind of like not use a page builder or just go ahead and do a page or theme builder. I brought up Divi as well because Divi is a, is a theme builder. As you can see, there's a lot of variability here. There's, you can use some of these builders on top of frameworks as well. I see somebody join here that we actually went over. Nicolette, do you want to, do you have some, a question or do you, we, we missed your topic uh, because you, uh, because you were <laughs> here when we asked it. But uh, is there something that you wanted to ask? Oh, no, that's okay. I actually figured it out by the time um, okay. someone answered me. Yeah, I just, I contacted GoDaddy and I updated my PHP. Yeah. And then that ended up being the issue with updating my WordPress. So, um, but yeah, thank you anyway. You're welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, um, can I ask something? Um, sure. Um, the, what, what I was actually going to work on today I, for, after talking to you in general about landing page is something that, I, I'm wondering if someone can help me if we run out of time to talk to me. I, I um, um, my, my, my site is slow and I think it's because of the photos. The photos have not been optimized enough. Some of them have, some of them haven't. And I don't want to use the, the one that optimizes them all at the same time because oh. then, then, then I will lose quality in a lot of the, the, um, you know, the, uh, the You're shaking your head, Boris. What? And Boris is, uh, is shaking his head. Now, what's your input, Boris? Oh, no, there's, a, there's some freebie ones, or we went through that in one of your uh, sessions, right? There's a lot of ones that will optimize a picture, but you can barely tell that it's been optimized. Like, you don't see the uh, quality gone. It's still lossless. Well, um, I, I need to know how to do this myself, and, and uh, you yeah. know, because my, my site, my, in the, um, it's slow on the G metrics, it's, it's slow. It's, okay. I wouldn't have known that because when I when I bring oh, up my it's fast. Um, so I is is there someone that can help me once because we're almost done now and uh, we didn't get time to go into that and I wondered if someone can help me look at an image or two from my site to just show me how to um, how to optimize it and re I guess I have to reload it to the library the the media library again reload it. You know, I, do, I don't know the order how to, what to do it. You know. There's a plugin called Replace, so you don't have to go through that, um, all that procedure, right? It'll replace it right there, so and you'll use it right away. But I wouldn't want them to do all my photos all at one time, though. No, no, you, or you do want to, the replace one, right? Once you get um, optimized, uh, I don't know how offhand, there's, there's one there, what is it? I'll have to get, I'll have to email you the one I use. Okay, well, what's your what's your email address, and then I'll send you my email then. You okay. guys can you guys can exchange that information in chat. Don't don't yeah. uh, put in it on the recording so that yeah, uh, I'll I'll do that. Sorry about that. Okay, on chat. Okay. Yeah, yeah feel free to connect. Anybody can actually chat each other. But can anyone? Chat, but who, uh, for, what can everyone tell me? What is the best way to optimize the individual? Well, you know, not one action for all your photos. Is there? What do you recommend that I, I look into trying to do? You know, Optimize the images before you uh, upload them to the website. It's too late. They've all been uploaded. Now I have to now get them all and I have to. Um, they may be okay. Then uh, I think. did have a, a developer, a very, very developer. Uh, there's a plugin that allows you to optimize a set of your images on your uh, 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 media library. <coughs> oh yeah, okay. I'm do it that way. And which one's that? Uh, what, what is it, Boris? Because I, I can't remember. I'm trying to look, I'm trying to look at two. Uh, it's something. called Optimizer it's, something, Optimizer. There, there are a few, there are Smush yeah. there's a uh, short pixel, Sh Shmoos, there's the Magic Pie. Wait, what, can I write that down, sorry? Just, can you guys put them in, t in the chat window? Okay. Just, put, just, in the, in the just chat. put in the chat window to everyone and then everyone can see those. Uh, yeah. Okay. Can bring up your chat window so you can Someone see. Someone said she can help me. I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch with her here too. Yeah, for sure. This is like one of those good things to kind of do offline because it's something that probably, you know, you got to, you want to see if it actually does something for your speed too. It may not. Right? Yeah. Because, because a, a developer did, you know, and he's, top notch guy and, and he must have done something like that. But but the thing is that on the when I do the test on G metrics, it, it's bad. Did it say you have to optimize your images? Is that what it said? 
I don't know, someone, some, someone told me, a tech person told me it's, it's not good, the, the uh -huh. speed. And he's, want... he's, he's guessing that's why. So. I okay. I what's, think your, I... what's, what's the web URL? Can you post it in the chat? Uh, sorry, what was that? Can you post the website URL in the chat? Maybe we could take a look at it. Okay, Shin, who are you? Who, uh, I, who am I talking Heather. to? Heather. Heather? Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll upload it in the chat then, Heather. Thank you. Okay, and I'm just emailing someone else now. Okay, I see, I see Dan sh uh, shared smush, short pixel imagery, but yeah, I guess the best option is imagine. Okay, I'll take a look at the chat and I'll just I'll make a note of everything and then I'll I'll pursue so it. We'll, then. we'll save the chat and upload this, of course, to our to our website too. Oh. Yeah, there's short pixel. Yeah, that's what it was. Short pixel. I know some pixel and it's sh and a schmoozy one. Short pixel. Short pixel. Okay, I I. But the thing is, I, I still need help to do it. I mean, I wouldn't just do it on my own, but I'll write down short pixel. I mean, if, if someone just shows me how to do one photo, then I know I'm good. I can do the rest of them. But, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not a developer. <laughs> what can I tell you? So short pixel, replace, something called replace. Okay. Uh, and can't find it. What? In, uh, a website that looks at the seven uh, uh, WordPress image optimizers, and I can't find uh, the uh, specific, you know, where it's targeted for a portion of the media library, not the total uh, media library. All the others just, you know, en masse do all every uh, image in the uh, media library, which is what you don't want. Well, I don't have that many images. I'm, I'm just like a five page website, you know. I, it's, oh, well then you could do it. Yeah, yeah, I could do each one because- Less than 30 images, it, uh, the, the, these things will be fast enough so you'll be done in five or uh, 10 minutes at the most. Yeah, which one though? Which one are you referring to? Oh, uh, any one of them. Uh, oh, any, okay. The website, uh, uh, and you just choose from there uh, which one you want. I use Smush It and Optimize. Uh, but you know that's uh, uh, that's my uh, uh, preference. Okay, well, uh, you let put me that in the chat. I guess I mean uh, reference here. A whole bunch, a whole bunch of them are shared in the chat. Okay. Uh, Fern. All right, folks. Well, we're getting towards that time. Eight thirty. I shared my article on the. Uh, the, the oh, membership management uh, site, my own experiences with our website. Um, and then uh, we use the same plugin for Jim Courtney's uh, site, uh, Streetsville United Church. So, um, so um, yeah, uh, a couple of uh, small housekeeping notes. If you love this meetup, feel free to uh, um, defray our cost of Zoom. We pay for Zoom every month uh, so that we can host these meetings as well. I use it in my company, obviously, but it'd be nice to get a $5 donation. If you're interested, please uh, go back to the meetup and, and link uh, to this PayPal link. This will, uh, we usually actually have a host um, that sponsors our space, but because we don't have space, we're not getting pizza. And so we're kind of, we're going to be reserving that money when we go back to physical face-to-face -face meetings, if we actually ever do that, to be honest with you because I'm actually enjoying doing this much more than going to a physical space. Mm. I don't know about you, but it's, for me, it's much more enjoyable to just to sit down and, and we have better turnout too. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, what do you guys all think? I'm just curious. Like when the software works, it, it, it goes great. I know we had some issues some months ago when we tried it, right, Jock? Uh, I, I'm having Initially. no problems uh, so far. Uh, I've, uh, uh, they put in new uh, um, password protection and uh, uh, I'm surprised, uh, uh, Alex, you, you don't have the uh, uh, waiting room admission. Uh, I just didn't turn it on. Yeah. I, it's too much for me to manage that. If I had an alternate host that would help me manage that, I just, if, if somebody is being an asshole, I'll just kick them off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not, you know what, all that's, all that stuff about media, the zoom bombing and stuff, you know, I, I think it's a Microsoft ploy to basically destroy this company. Oh, this I is, get Skype. Back this up. is, this product has changed my life. This is, and, and now they've changed hundreds of millions of people's lives. 
My daughter is on this thing nine to five every day with a password, nine to four in their school. Uh, basically, they've replaced physical school very successfully, I might add. And frankly, without the commuting and without the bullying that goes on in the school. And okay. There's an interesting side effect. I'll go on a little but like I've noticed that the kids, it's hard for kids, especially if they're like nine, 10 years old, to focus for a long period. But their level of learning is superior, like, as far as I'm concerned because the tension is there, there's nobody hitting each other, they're focused, I don't know how long they can do it for, frankly, but yeah. um, it's, it's astounding. I've watched it for the last month with my daughter and I, I, I'm just, I'm shocked, frankly, how well the kids have adopted to using Zoom for online school. Uh, did, did you try WebEx at all? I will never use any other product, I've tried them all. Blue oh, jeans, yeah. WebEx. Oh. I just tried the Slack uh, video thing with one of some of our team, which is a piece of shit. The yeah. built-in Slack video conferencing is just horrible. Uh, it's just awful. I mean, it's like an embarrassment. They should just buy Zoom and integrate it. I've tried Skype for business. I've tried um, Acrobat or Adobe had a product. All of them suck. All of them. They all have their own crazy sort of like problems and user interface glitches they're all made for enterprise zoom is the only product i've seen 80 year olds use without any problems as long as their video camera works and their audio works and if they don't they just dial into the number um it just works yeah did you say that you tried um webex was that right yeah and you didn't uh, like I it no. and that's from cisco which is yeah a good I, I mean, yeah. That product's been around forever. I mean, WebEx yeah. Cisco has been around for decade plus. Like, but it's just there's something about the idea of a meeting ID and a link and the ability for these meetings to be hosted on any platform known to man. I had a person sh uh, join me from a Linux box, and they were running Zoom just fine. And I, you know, from an iPad, from a tablet, from an Android device. You know, from from a PC, from a Mac, from from anything. And yeah, then, uh, a lot of people are coming in on uh, uh, not only Macs but the iPads and uh, yeah. various uh, tablets, including uh, both Android and uh, 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 iOS. Uh, yeah. iPad. This 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 the Zoom costs uh, twenty bucks per person per month. You've got unlimited meetings, up to a hundred meetings. So it's not a cheap product. I mean. $20, no, $20 a, $20 a month. And so our company uses it to talk to our customers. I must have like maybe, I don't know, 10 to 15 zoom meetings every week. We, we use it for prospects. I've been using it for several years now. Um, all of our customer relationship managers, I actually, one of them is on the call being quiet. <laughs> She's uh, she uses it all the time with customers. We do this kind of stuff, like what we're doing here in this meeting, debugging, helping, we're doing working meetings. It's a, uh, it's a lifesaver. I have to say, like, it's really just a great, great product. And, and I always thought like when we do these meetups, we go face to face, we have this aspect of like meeting each other. And that's true. We can have pizza together. I don't want to like necessarily get rid of that, but this particular kind of meetup when we have questions and people want to share their screen and then want, and I want to show something, there's nothing like seeing something and sharing a screen or maybe logging into somebody's site. Sometimes we'll log, we actually didn't do that much this time actually logged in to actually debug an issue, but we can do that. We usually have at least one CSS problem for meeting. And so that's usually where we'll get into a, you know, debugging some CSS. But um, yeah, like I'm a big fan. Like, so. Uh, you think uh, the uh, automatic will allow uh, after the, uh, you know, the, uh, 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 sanctions against uh, um, coronavirus will allow uh, remote meetings because they were against it. Uh, uh, I tried to do remote meetings uh, uh, on my uh, West End thing and uh, first the city of Toronto uh, uh, did nothing cooperative but second uh, I got a note from Automatic saying uh, no you, you shouldn't be doing uh, remote meetings. <laughs> You know what? Can I tell you something? I have this, I have a sneaking suspicion that at least one major word camp, like a US or a Europe will be done completely virtually in the next few years. Completely. Oh, really? Oh, for you sure. expect that. Oh, I've yeah, already sure. done one. For sure. Uh, a block camp for Gutenberg. It's a there word camp go. around uh, blocks yeah, and it sure. was all done online. Oh, for sure. It, this is, this is too Remember good that, of a, 
you know, think, think about what's happening in the business model. So you've got no physical space, no food, no t-shirts, no pins. And if you want that stuff, feel free to send it out by mail, whatever. You can still charge 20, 30 bucks a month. You can actually pay for the technology. You can maybe pay for the organizers and you may have thousands of people attend from all over the world and talk about accessibility. Like what more could you want? You want a hallway track? Well, have Zoom breakout meetings. Have like, I don't know, free access to Zoom so people can join ad hoc meetings. Like, I mean, I know there's something to be said for meeting people face to face and going having dinner together, which is fine and all well and good. But I think for technical conferences, I'm not sure you can do better than this. And in particular, like I'm going to be presenting at a virtual, like one of the conferences I was going to go to for Wild Apricot it was going to be in Colorado Springs in April. Of course, they, sus they suspended it. So now they're going to next on Thursday, they're going to have an all day virtual conference. They're using something called web cloud. I can actually show you guys if you're interested. So they're, what they're doing, they did something interesting. So they're basically pre-recorded all the, all the agenda now. So they have all their, all the sponsors have their own video, a call with a call to action. You can watch. So then they're going to have a live opening stream, which is like WordCamp, WordPress has been doing this. They had like live streaming on YouTube, but what's happening is all the agenda of the meeting, all these talks are going to be dropping in this uh, password protected portal. This is a free conference. It used to cost a thousand dollars to go to this. So now they've, they've pre-recorded all these sessions. They're going to drop at a particular time inside of this portal. And then people are going to be able to watch them. There's a chat system. We're having our own Zoom watch party for my talk that's going to be on this. And then I have calls to action within my, within my meeting. So when people are physically there, I can basically take them to my website and I can have them sign up and do all, you know, I have a contest that I'm running. So you have all of this direct computer kind of connection between um, the, the, the content and what you want people potentially to do with that content. And, and, and then the networking is just a matter of collaborating around the content, whether it be through Zoom or whether it be through a technology platform. When you have a physical presence, you can probably, if you have a booth, you can probably reach a few hundred people. Here they're gonna reach a few, these, these vendors are gonna reach a few thousand people with these videos and they're short and sweet. And I, I bet you all the people are gonna watch at least some of them, right? So, you know, it's a, this is like, this is a, what they call a virtual conference basically. And they did this literally like in a month, they converted the whole physical conference, dumped the venue, dumped the food, dumped the airline tickets, dumped the, like I saved, I don't know, $1,500. I was gonna go there to be present there. My session would have been maybe 50 people max. Now I'll have potentially thousands of people be able to watch my video. Right. So like, that's the interesting thing. Zoom has an enterprise plan for a thousand participants. And uh, that costs uh, 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 $20 per month per host. Yeah. Uh, so I guess uh, you could, I don't see anything where they can get into the huge meetings that, um, Skype and uh, oh no, they have a webinar for 10,000 members. Oh, they have a completely separate platform. What oh, we're using okay. is the meeting platform, they have a webinar platform too. Oh, yeah, that's it. Bundle discounts on webinars and Zoom rooms. Okay, yeah, they have like a whole different kind of thing where you can actually have like one presenter and they can have like a break. I've never actually used it. So, according to I just Ross just messaged me, WordCamp Europe is going to be online as you would expect, the whole darn WordCamp, right? So, there you go. Like, yeah. And they'll need uh, a, a webinar approach. Uh, yeah, for sure. Like, this is amazing. Like, WordCamp Europe, one of the major WordCamps, the eighth year is going to be 100% online. Yeah. And they just started moving it in April, right? So, like, they just they just literally announced this a few days ago. They, they said, forget it. We're going to initially postpone it, obviously. And then just say, well, why don't we just run the whole thing online? And you damn well, I'm going to register for this because now I can actually enjoy this and see how they run something like this online. Right. It's going to, it's going to be amazing. I would have never gone to WordCamp Europe. I would have maybe, you know, right. So like, this is amazing, right? Very accessible. I think I'm signing up right now. So can... uh, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see if uh, uh, businesses follow suit. Oh, they will. They will. It's, it's too good not to. It's just the physical presence stuff is, is still important, obviously for sales and stuff, but like it's, it's a huge money saving. It's going to, this COVID thing is going to transform the way we live our lives, unfortunately. <laughs>
It will become a blend between the physical and the yeah, online. Yeah, a blend. That's right. Yeah. I had a, sorry, I was just going to, I haven't said anything all night, so oh. I finally thought of something to say. My sister's been uh, crazy busy these uh, past few weeks because she works at Humber. Mm. And instead of, and normally they have it open houses where all new grads can go and check out the area. But of course they can't do that now. And so she was busy setting up um, an online um, open house session and they're just saying why would we go back because now we're op now that we did the work why would we throw it away when we can now have you know thousands of foreign students go online and check out the place so it's like yeah it's for better or worse there's going to be some things that suck about whatever is going to happen next but a lot of things are going to be quite handy absolutely absolutely um, I think that the idea of lead generation with with zoom would be really cool imagine visiting a website and you got a somebody fill out a form and then it asked them would you like us to do a, a real-time web conference with you right now i kind of have that on my site it's not real time though but i have like if somebody fills out a form it emails them back a link to a scheduling system where one of the options is a zoom conference and they schedule and they send them back a zoom link so i completely automated that but it'd be cool if we basically say hey i want to do a zoom call with you right now on the website can you, can you invoke that? And then somehow that, search, that system finds me wherever I am and alerts me that somebody wants to talk to me. Like, like there's this chat stuff and all this other stuff, which I think is horseshit. I don't like, I don't like the chat thing where somebody's sitting there behind a por you know, portal and you're waiting 20 minutes to converse on something that's very straightforward and simple. But like, th there's nothing like a physical interaction. And I've, I mean, you know, I've enjoyed watching you all in this Brady Bunch layout and some people are not showing their video, but other people are. And you're in a kind of your own, you know, Robin is absolutely the same view every single time. He's got that screen behind him. He's, he's peering into his monitor. That's just the way he is. Like, and uh, so I kind of, I don't know, I'm, and I'm using virtual backgrounds now. And like, you know, you could see like, you know, I've got our sponsors there. I've got my little microphone here. So you can, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not great. I mean, it's, uh, it's just, you know, it is what it is. So I think it's going to be interesting. It's, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful about it, where this all goes. I think it's going to be an interesting transformation to some extent. <clears throat> all right, folks, don't want to take more of your time. Thank you for a wonderful uh, second virtual meetup. Our next meetup is going to be the third. Most, like, most likely this way. Sorry, was somebody it's saying? the third. Uh, February, March, April. Uh, do we, no, I think, did we do one in February? February 17th, as I recall. Was the first? Yeah, this is the third. Before we all, home, but it was just at the tipping point, right? We decided, you decided, that the 17th would be the first uh, online one. Uh-huh. Just a couple days before. Right. No, but, fe but February before. was, February was in, in person, though. Right? Yeah. February yeah. is the first online one. No, 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 I miss it. No, I went there. No, I have, I have a picture of us all together on the website. <laughs> and you did the, right this is our you did the recap. I this is just our third. second. Yeah, because I want to have a video. We'll, we'll, we'll have a recap here and uh, we'll post. This is actually how we post these. Uh, so we have a, uh, a website that we post a video. I upload it to Vimeo. We put a little banner there. You can watch the whole thing. And then there is a... Um, I, Rob, I think Robin did this recap. It was very, very good. I really, it was really great. And there's all kinds of links here. There's, there's going to be a lot of content on this one, Robin. There's a lot of conversations here. Um, but um, this is a, this is a new, newfangled, uh, uh, like if somebody wasn't at our, at our session and wants to kind of listen in, this is as good as almost as being there. And I have several people that told me they watch this stuff. And um, I don't even know what the analytics on this thing is, but I bet you it's more than a few links. Uh, let's take a look here. I'm just curious. Um, I'm, uh, I have one concern, and that is uh, there have been uh, privacy issues associated with the MP4s being uh, uh, utilized uh, outside by uh, 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 by Zoom, and I oh, mm -hmm. figured out how how uh, uh, how bad or good that is yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, in general, yeah. The, but if I pay for a product, I, I'm, I, I would be amazed that they would actually share that. They might use it for analytic purposes, 
and maybe to improve the audio. But this video that of our Let's Our Fix our, uh, March site has been watched 40 times on, on Vimeo. That's not Alex, true. Alex, they basically sold everything that would move in the way of user data, yeah. all contrary to what they promised in the various agreements. I mean, yeah. You might be right. And I mean, we're like, quite embarrassed. However, since the founder uh, just recently passed a billion dollar net worth, you know, he, his sweat seemed to be uh, rather modest. Um, but Zoom has been humiliated in the last six weeks by the number of transgressions that have been surfaced because of their vast popularity. Well, see, as soon as we started talking about them, they we'll started see running. how the brand survives because, uh, you know, it's hard to sustain them. Yeah, business. that's the tracking code working. The, the tracking code is working and, 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 and shutting Robin up. It's totally like, it's, it's fuzzing up your audio back big time, Robin. We were, talking, we were talking shit about them and now, and now and that they're screwing up your yeah. audio. <laughs> they're getting their revenge. In real time, Robin. <laughs> yes, in real time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we're living in crazy times. No, but this Vimeo, I was just showing that this Vimeo um, a video of, um, of our meetup last month was viewed 40 times. And I, I didn't view it the whole time way through. But that's, that's a lot, actually, for yeah, something that, that all we did well, was put on I our can, website. If I can add something, uh, I was one of those 40 this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Uh, I'm a new uh, a new uh, member, I guess, and yeah. uh, signed up, and uh, I've enjoyed it. I wanted to see what it was like this afternoon, so uh, yeah. there was 39 other ones. Absolutely, no. It's it's definitely it's it's got this interesting side effect because we can self document in a way that is un you know it's very hard to do, and it, this is a definitely a different vibe. It's a different. I can feel that we're more engaged, and people are sharing. Uh, stuff on chat and there's there's more density of information and well so, i i really appreciated uh you were um, you were uh debugging somebody's uh website and you could follow uh the procedures and you just learn so much just by watching it yeah some yeah something like that i mean it's yeah i mean you could this the point of this is to really help there's so much to learn about this and so this is kind of the point of this meetup okay yeah. folks um have a good night i'm going to finish up our April 21st, uh, let's fix your website or WordPress website uh, meetup. Thank you for joining us. Again, our next meetup, if you want to uh, sign up and put your, uh, put your uh, uh, question in, remember, is going to be, it's on the WP Toronto meetup site. Uh, it's, uh, it should be, let's take a look and see where the upcoming meetups are. If I can find it, it's uh, May 3rd, I think. Is that what? No, it can't be. It's near, it's near the end of May. So let me just see if I can find it here. Um, yeah, let's see here. It is on. Okay, got to run, guys. Take care. See ya, Jock. Uh, it is on uh, May 19th, Tuesday, May 19th, 6.30 p.m. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you, Alex. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. you.